Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the Calexico City Council Calexico Redevelopment. Got it? Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome, uh, welcome to the Calexico City Council Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency Calexico <laughs> Financing Authority Reg regular meeting agenda. Today's date is Wednesday, October the 19th, 2022. The time is 5.32 p.m. Call to order. Due to the declaration of emergency, this meeting is being held pursuant to AB 361, approved by the government of California on September the 16th, 2021. And some or all the city council members may participate in this meeting via teleconference. Pursuant to Imperial County Public Health Department guidelines, city council meetings are now open for the public, attends at 100% of capacity of the council chambers. Public participation will continue to be available in the following ways. Members of the public are encouraged to watch the meeting via live stream at HTTP community spectrum .org live at 6.30 p.m. or via the Calexico City Hall Facebook page at www.facebook.com city of Calexico CA. Members of the public will be able to make public comments in the following ways. In-person comments, submit public com comments via email by 2 p.m. on Wednesday, October the 19th 2022 to the city clerk to the email at city clerk at collecticoca.gov or via fax to 760-768-2103. You may make public comments via Zoom from, from a PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or Android device. The telephone to dial is 1669-900-6833. The webinar ID number is 832-3088-7644. And the passcode is 278661. I will take roll call. Mayor Javier Moreno here. Mayor Pro Tem Lureña. Here. Council Member Camilo Garcia. Here. Council Member Gloria Romo. Here. And Council Member Rosie Ariola Fernandez. Thank you. We have a quorum. Public comments. Not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on closed session items only. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the city council meetings with personal or slanderous remarks. The city council is prohibited by state law from make, taking action on this or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the city council. Do we have any public comments? No, nope. thank you. Moving on. Uh, adjourn to closed session. A closed session of the City Council collects a community redevelopment agency successor agency. Calexico Financing Authority may be held in accordance with state law, which may include, but is not limited to, the following type of items. Personal matters, labor negotiations, security matters, providing instructions to, the, um, <coughs> to real property negotiations, and conference with legal counsel regarding pending litigation. The closed session will be held in the City Hall Conference Room located at 608 Hebrew Avenue, Calexico, California. Any public comments on closed session items will be taken before the closed session. Any required announcements or discussion on closed session items or actions following the closed session will be made in the city council chambers at this address, 608 Hebrew Avenue, Collective California. And there's no closed session comments. We will close for closed session at 6.35. Good evening, please come to order. Welcome to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority, open session. It is 6.31, uh, call to order, roll call, Mayor Javier Moreno here, Mayor Paul Tenra Lureña. Here. Council Member Camilo Garcia. Here. Council Member Gloria Romo. Here. And Council Member Rosia Ariola Fernandez. Here. Thank you, we have a quorum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready to begin. Mission statement. Together, we pledge to provide effective 
motion by Mr. Robo. Thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We place this regular meeting in your hands and we ask you to bless to people of Calexico and the people of Imperial County. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please have a seat. Our next item is closed session announcement. Thank you, Mayor. City Council met in closed session on the one item described on the agenda, received direction, but no reportable actions were taken. Thank you. Thank you. On the approval agenda, before we approve it, we have, I believe, one emergency item. And Good afternoon. Uh, we received a last minute request from the Mexican consulate to call a sponsor an event the, that is going to happen on October the 27th as for a farm workers breakfast that are requesting the city to be a co-sponsor by providing the logo and also some support services that we estimate is going to be about $1,200. And the cost and the $1,200 is on, on services basically. They want assistance from uh, security because mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, on the street level and maybe to have some barricades to protect the community during the event. Yeah, and, and Mayor, this item that came, came to the attention of the city after the posting of the agenda, it's an item that cannot wait int until the next meeting due to, due to the date of the event. All right, thank you. All right, I need a motion to approve the agenda. Mayor. Yes. Excuse me. Before accepting the agenda, I want to ask the lawyer, Carlos, if it uses um, 10 and 20, are the same? Or clarify, please. Uh, items 10 and 20. Let's go, let's go. 10 and 20. So item 10 and, uh -huh, and 20. 20. Oh, great. OK. Uh, similar, no? Correct. It's very similar item, but one of them, you're taking action as a city council for the city of Calexico, and the other one you're taking action as a successor agency to the, re the former oh, redevelopment okay. of the city. So it is the same agreement, but there's two, you're, you're acting in two different capacities, okay. one as city and one as a successor agency, and that's why there's two separate agenda items. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I Thank have a motion to approve the agenda and add the uh, recommendation for Esperanza Colio for approval the request for Mexican consulate. Okay, motion, motion made by Mr. Romo. Anybody second that? Second. Second by Mr. Garcia. Um, roll call, please. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'll do it because I know last time we were doing late. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried 5 0. Thank you. Moving on to presentations. Uh, on the presentation by uh, Efrain Silva, he's not going to be here. However, Alexis Villa, Dean of Student Services, Special Projects, and Mr. Bill Gay, uh, Public Relations Consultant, will represent on his, on her, on his behalf um, for improved value college. You can step up, please. Good evening, everyone. I'm really excited to present um, on behalf of my colleague tonight. Um, again, my name is Alexis Villa. I'm also a Calexico native, believe it or not. I moved to Imperial about four years ago. So as a, as a Calexico native, I'm really excited to present um, to the members of the council tonight. So we're gonna present on our comprehensive master plan and also provide a campus update to the uh, Calexico community. So next slide, please. And this is just an overview of the slides that we'll be presenting on today. Um, we will be going over our educational and facilities master plan, our campus enhancements. Um, Mr. Gay will present over Measure B. Um, I'll also present some updates on the 60th anniversary of Imperial Valley College and our Aspen uh, Institute. And then we'll go over our campus priorities and hopefully have a little bit of time over for questions. All right. So for our educational and facilities master plan, we have some strategic goals that um, guide us in terms of planning out um, what it's gonna look like for our institution. Um, so 
These goals outline, obviously, providing excellent academic programs for all of our students and our community members that include clear pathways. So that's something we're really focusing on as an institution. And if we go over the strategic goal B, it's to ensure learning at all levels and ensuring that our students are supported um, for their academic success so that they can reach their education and career goals. In addition, um, our goal C would be aligning our IPC programs with our current labor market. We want to ensure that we're intentional in the education program pathways that we are providing. In addition, obviously, really important to us is to tr strengthen the culture of diversity, um, inclusion, and equity. So all of our um, plans are guided through that framework, especially uh, also through social justice. And lastly, in terms of strategic goals, we're hoping to develop um, Im and implement responsible and sustainable practices. We recognize that these uh, plans take years to implement, but we want to be very intentional in our planning. Next slide, please. So to allow us to um, kind of guide this work, right now as an institution and across the state of California, we're implemented the Guided Pathways Framework. And as you see before you, they have four pillars. And the first pillar is clarifying the path. When students come to IVC, we want to ensure that we remove any barriers for students to apply for classes here with us. Um, so clarifying the path is doing just that, outlining what programs we're providing and ensuring that we meet the students where they are. Entering the path is including um, customized and individual planning that can look like coming in with counselors, ensuring that the students have the accurate classes that they need to reach their academic goals. And um, under each pillar, you can see the specific um, areas that the pillar focuses on. Staying on the path is providing intentional programming to our students, ensuring that they have nudges and reminders to um, do well in their coursework and to reach those goals that we are talking about. Um, also supporting them not only on an individual level, but on a community uh, based level as well. The last pillar is ensuring learning. This is how we're evaluated, so ensuring that um, not only as we're implementing this framework that it's just there, that, but we're also showing outcomes. So that includes um, ensuring that we have the data, the metrics, seeing how, how well our, our students are doing or if there are any gaps. So um, this framework is being implemented, like I said, across the institution, but also across the state, and it's what's guiding our um, institutional priorities. Next slide, please. So that picture there is what we are trying to avoid. So as you see, when our students come to IBC, there may be students that have a linear path where it's like you can check off all the boxes, but there are also students that may be lost when they get there. And they may experience um, a little back and forth or running in circles. So we're trying to ensure that we make it as clear and easy as possible for them to come to IBC and receive the services that we are able to provide. Um, so it's just for jokes, my, our president likes that, to use that graphic on this is what we're trying to avoid. So next slide, please. So the pictures you see up there, a lot's going on. Um, on the top corner there, you see our tiny home community, which houses uh, 26 of our students. Um, you see also um, some of our previous food distributions. Currently, right now, we're serving around 350 families every month. And that includes IVC students and community members that come out for um, food services. This is in partnership with Ivy Food Bank. And also, we also supplement some of the food. Um, the other pictures right there, you see the inside of the tiny home and what it looks like. And um, right at the top corner, you also see our hygiene kit. So these are just some of the services that we provide to eliminate the barriers for the students. Next slide, please. And so, we're really excited to announce that um, as we also um, embark on the second year of providing our tiny home um, services to the community, um, you see that we have movie nights and we have community nights for our student residents. And we're also embarking on a really exciting opportunity with San Diego State Imperial Valley Campus. Um, we recognize that most of our students that come to IBC are from Calexico, so we are working with them very intentionally to be able to um, make SB 169 affordable housing project a reality. Right now we are currently collaborating on ensuring that we secure um, the adequate funding to make this project a reality, but if it does go through, it would be housed at San Diego State Imperial Valley Campus, so here in Calexico, and it would service close to 80 students. And now I'll pass it over to Mr. Gay. Okay, could, uh, next slide please. If we, uh, what I'd like to show, on, uh, if you could just yeah, advance it one slide. Uh, what you have here is uh, a slide that shows the new and repurposed buildings at uh, Imperial Valley College that uh, 
have been built over the years. Uh, the uh, let's see, we're let's go back one. I guess I, I guess I did jump ahead. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, these are some aerial shots of the of the campus. The one on the left is really what the campus looks like today. If you were to fly over it, uh, it uh, it has the buildings. The uh, the big building at the top is the 2700 building, which is was built uh, in the two in the about 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and then the career tech buildings over on the far left in the upper left hand corner were uh, funded uh, primarily by our final our Measure J bond, which we are finishing up uh, even as we speak this year. If we you know, now we can advance the slide. The uh, there's a, num a number of new and repurposed buildings that we're looking at. I'm going to be talking about a regional public safety center here in a second. And one of the big ones that we have that is actually wrapping up Measure J is the Auto Tech and Arts Building, which uh, will be breaking ground next year and it will be completed probably in 2025. So next slide. This is really a breakdown of what the aerial, uh, aerial view of the campus again. The, uh, the, the buildings that are in light brown are the buildings that we're eyeing for Measure B, which is on the ballot coming up uh, November 8th. There are also modernization projects which are continuing under Measure J. And uh, as I said, and then they have the gray areas are the existing buildings on the campus. And I have to say that most of those existing buildings are 60 years old. We're, we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the opening of the Aiton Road campus right now, which uh, Alexis will be mentioning here in a minute. At the bottom are the Measure J funded projects that uh, are wrapping up and the final project in Measure J is going to be the auto technology uh, facility. So uh, next slide, please. So these are campus enhancements that have been added over the period of time uh, that are maybe not, uh, not big buildings, but they're important to students. Uh, campus lighting, uh, we just finished the uh, campus reopening of the uh, College Center, which was greatly expanded, and if, you, if you've attended IBC, you might remember how small it was and how students would have to leave the building when special events were taking place. Now you can have, a, there can be a special event in one area and the students can be in the other. Uh, remodeling of the academic buildings, the 200, 300, and 800 buildings. We're refinishing tennis courts, which uh, actually became a very a dangerous place to play uh, until until we, we re rehabbed them. Uh, next slide, please. This is the Auto Technology Building, which, as I said, is the last uh, project on Measure J, and uh, the plans are in the Department of State Architect right now. They will be coming back soon, and ground will be broken in 2023, as I said, and it will uh, be open hopefully in 2025. It will be a fantastic facility and it will be a high tech area where we're training the future workers for uh, uh, maintaining our automobiles. So uh, if you could go to the next slide and we can, <coughs> I'll go over a little bit more in detail on Measure B. Uh, next slide. Critical facts about Measure B, as I said, uh, it's a general obligation bond and it will be on the uh, the uh, November 8th ballot. We're asking for uh, 123 million for the period of the bond. The tax rate would be three cents per $100 of assessed value. And remember, assessed value is not market value. Uh, assessed value is less than market value. So, uh, and the uh, many of the projects that we would be funded by the bond would qualify for future state matching funds. Uh, for example, in Measure J, we had, I believe, $8 million in state matching funds that came in because voters here approved a bond a number of years ago, and we were able to leverage that money with additional matching funds. And so if the state has future school bond measures on the ballot, uh, we would be uh, in line maybe to receive some of that money. So next, next slide. Signature project. This is the project that we really are are going to be, it's going to be right out of the box once the, uh, once, uh, if, uh, assuming the voters approve the bond, the bond measure. It's a 
public sa a regional public safety training center. Right now, uh, we, have, we, we do have uh, public safety training. We have an excellent fire academy. We have a uh, police academy, but the facilities are not adequate for the needs of the, of the training. And so what we're going to do, we're going to expand those facilities, uh, add such things as a, as a fire tower which will allow firefighter training to occur in a multi-story atmosphere, which will, uh, in fact, uh, Chief Favela uh, is, uh, I've kind of primed him, if, uh, if you have some questions for him, Chief Favela is the uh, president of the Fire Chiefs Association in uh, Imperial County, and they, they endorsed our bond, and, uh, and he can give you some details on some of the, uh, some of the things that will do to not only training student firefighters, but also training, ongoing professional training for your existing firefighters. Right now, you have to send them to Riverside County many times, or our students have to go all over the valley to get training. There's not one central location where they can be, go through this firefighting academy. And so it's a, it, it really will be a wonderful facility for the campus. So next, next slide. The benefits for the region, uh, it's cost effective, Public, it's cost-effective uh, public safety for training for careers in law enforcement, health, firefighting. Uh, reduces the training time for, uh, for law enforcement officers. Uh, right now, we have to send uh, our law enforcement officers out of the county for professional training. Then that means uh, they're, you're not only paying per diem for them and you're paying uh, housing and everything like that. They also have to be backfilled here locally to be able to uh, so you can, you can have your department staffed. And so uh, this will alleviate a lot of those expenses. Looking at a mock emergency operations center that will train people to, uh, to operate at an EOC, but at the same time, it potentially could be in the future, if there was a need to arrive, a backup EOC for the, for the, for the county. Uh, Number of, uh, we're also looking at programs and uh, facilities for careers in lithium technology, which is coming down the road. We know it's going to be there. IBC has got a, three certificate programs that they're putting together to train the workers uh, that in, the, in the lithium technologies. And so those, those are facilities there. Uh, next slide. We did a survey of, uh, of voters uh, in May, and uh, we, we had a, a the reason the board decided to put this on the ballot is because of the support that was indicated by the voters for the, the, uh, the, the facilities that we're proposing. Uh, we had a hundred, we had a 64% yes vote, people who said that they would vote yes, and then we had another 8% who leaned yes. So there were 72% uh, of the voters that we surveyed, and it was a, a random sur survey of registered voters, as I said. And we only need 55%. So, uh, so we felt comfortable if we can get our story across that the voters would, uh, would, would, would back it. And so we're, that's what we're, we're doing. So next slide. This is the ballot language. Uh, I don't have to go through and read it, but it uh, basically recaps all the, all the things that we are, uh, we are looking at. And uh, it will be on the, it is on the ballot. Uh, we've had, as I said, we've had some excellent endorsements from uh, from the firefighters associate, from the fire chiefs association, as well as from the police chiefs and sheriffs, uh, police chiefs and sheriffs association. So, uh, so we're getting some very good, very good feedback on this. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And these are additional projects on Measure B that will be uh, that that. Uh, that will, would be funded down the road. Uh, pro the uh, mentioned lithium. Uh, there's uh, needs to upgrade our science, technology, and engineering and mathematics, all of our STEM buildings, uh, renovating and modernizing our classrooms, labs, and facilities. As I said, uh, those that have not been able to be remodeled under Measure J will be finished up under Measure B, and these are 60-year-old buildings, and we have air conditioning systems that go down. We have, uh, there's, there's just, they're, they're showing their age. They're, they need to, they need to, need to be upgraded. Uh, can the, uh, there's, there's, one, there's one facility that is being looked at, and that's a one-stop student services uh, center that uh, 
Alexis talked about all the circles on that map and everything like that and how students have to go from building to building and get lost or get mm -hmm. checked back and things like that. So we want to have a one-stop student services center so students can, uh, can get all their needs fixed in one location. So next slide. Uh, this bond uh, provides a guaranteed source of local funding for the college and the funds can only be used by IVC and we cannot, they cannot be taken by the state or used elsewhere. Uh, there, it is also uh, monitored by an independent citizens advisory committee that we've had and we've had one in place at IVC for the past, uh, well, past 20 years and they've, they've done a great, they've, the audits that we've had on previous bonds have all been very good. Uh, they've been, uh, and we've had very good uh, oversight from the community of the expenditures that, uh, that are going. And no funds can be used for any salaries at all. They have to be used for the facilities that, we, that we're, we're saying. So next slide. And with that, I'm going to uh, kick it back to Alexis for some things that we are really proud of. Thank you, Bill. So um, we're proud to announce, along with our 60-year um, anniversary, uh, our Aspen finalist designation. So um, for those of you, just to give a little background on Aspen, they're an institute of research that conducts research at different um, levels in education. <coughs> Specifically, they have a program for community colleges where they evaluate the research and how each college is doing. Um, we applied for this program and institute and um, we made it first to the top 100, I believe. And from there, we're super excited because this is the top 100 amongst 1167 11, community colleges across the country. Um, soon after, we were um, notified that we made it to the top 25%. So we were like, top 25, I'm sorry. So we were really excited about that. Um, we are now the top 10 community colleges in the nation. So IVC was designated um, as an Aspen top 10, which is a huge honor in, in our realm that we're really proud of as an institution, but also as a community. Um, because we want our students to be proud of you know, the, the community college, and we want our community to be proud as well. So this is something that we really share with a lot of pride and a lot of excitement. Um, we've done a lot of rebranding around this uh, designation. We had a visit last week on the, 10, uh, the 12th and the 13th by um, Aspen uh, researchers that interviewed us for two days and it really asked us um, specific questions on different areas at our institution, which was really exciting and really nerve-wracking. <laughs> but um, so we, we did well, there were no recommendations, which is a really good sign, we're really excited about that. And we'll hear on their decision probably in April. So in the next slide, we go into what areas Aspen actually evaluated. So they evaluated learning, and these are some of the questions that they ask. Um, so do colleges set expectations and measure learning and use that information to measure measurably increase student learning? So we had to present data on each of these areas, also around completion, um, how students choose their program of study, do they make a timely progress, and do they earn degrees um, or meaningful credentials that'll help them um, enter the workforce. They also asked about our workforce programs. Are the graduates finding strong employment opportunities and well-paying positions? Um, in addition, they asked about our transfer trends as an institution and asking, do students uh, transfer to four-year institutions and are they earning bachelor's degrees, right? And um, most importantly, they were really uh, excited about our equity uh, measures and asking, do we ex um, include equitable access for all of our programs and services? And are there outcomes attached to those um, equity um, priorities for students specifically from low-income backgrounds? So um, we are a top 10 finalist all around on all these metrics. And um, we'll hopefully bring some good news in April. Maybe we can come back for an update and share that we're number one. We're really, really excited. But just being 10, top 10 is an honor. And it's something that you will see branded um, at our institution for quite some time. So. Um, I believe that concludes our presentation. Oh no, we have one more slide. So um, some campus priorities along with that designation um, that we're focusing on in this academic year for 2022 and 2023 is ensuring that there are safety enhancements throughout our campus. That means updating some of our um, camera systems and ensuring that there are safety enhancements in place. Also, um, Focusing on our, our enrollment trends and ensuring enrollment growth. Um, right now, we are at double-digit enrollment increase um, since the pandemic, which was really exciting. 
Um, and, and that includes also updating our website and makes it, making it more accessible for our students, um, strengthening our community partnerships, which is why we're here today, you know, providing this update, um, ensuring that our athletics programs um, are also updated and, and receive some, some TLC. There's some updates in that area as well. Um, focusing on our grant and fundraising as an institution and also providing professional development opportunities for all our staff and faculty. So that was the last slide, but if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to answer. I don't have anything unless my cohorts have anything. Just thank you for the presentation. Very enlightening, a lot of information. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. Um, there is. thank you for having us. Yes. Hey, be, before you leave, I, I do have a couple of things. You know, first of all, congratulations on that, uh, just even being considered the top 10 you know, colleges, community colleges. Thank best you. of luck on that. And of course, uh, I wish you the best of luck in, in getting that you know, number one. And regardless of that outcome, you know, I would like to see you again, you know, in, in April, even before that, you know. But, yes. you know, this is exciting, you know, to me uh, that I, I've gone through through IBC and kind of looking at the at the way that it's looking now, you know, and what it will look like in the future. I mean, that's exciting. That's something to be proud of, and I think it shows on the results that we're seeing. So, um, the the upcoming buildings. Uh, and I saw in one slide that it says that is. Um, um, modular or whatever, you know, so, so the new buildings, are they going to be modular also, the ones that are going to be replaced, or what are we looking at? No, there are mar modular buildings on campus right now that are going to be replaced. Yes. Okay. By the, they, we're using, there's there some, I think, on the north side, north uh, east side of the campus that are modular, and they will be replaced with classrooms. That's, that's what that indication was on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, and, Oh, yeah. The existing modular buildings that we do have uh, at the northeast part of campus, um, it was housing our, our nursing, but now that we opened our new, like, refurbished <coughs> nursing building, um, we're going to phase those out as well. And, and then also, uh, just on another great project, that the tiny homes. I remember what that was, when that was uh, opened up uh, you know, the first time, I think, you know, you mentioned that uh, there are 26 students. Yes. And I think it was also mentioned that uh, once COVID, uh, you know, kind of like, we got out of COVID, uh, that maybe there was a possibility of doubling, you know, uh, is that is still? Uh... So that's a great question. Um, yes, we have had a lot of success with the tiny home project. I can tell you that there's been over 50 students housed already. So the, pro the students are not only coming to stay with us, but they transition out within a six month period, um, finding sustainable like housing or like long-term solutions mm -hmm. for their housing. Um, the build, the land, uh, like right next to the tiny homes, is available. So we are looking at potential grant opportunities to expand the project. But right now, right now, since we have the partnership with SDSU and the housing program project here, we're focusing on that one kind of first, and then going to expanding the tiny homes. So hopefully, in the near future, if we secure funding, it, it can become a reality. Because I will be very transparent: our housing uh, waiting list is really big. We're up to, I believe, 500 students on that waiting list. So 500 students, you know, requesting housing. One last question, you yeah. know, on the STEM and, and just technology, right? So I did hear something about uh, your automotive, uh, you know, um, offering also your CTE. Is there any also any, uh, are there any plans to also include new technology, you know, electric? I know that uh, very few colleges right now, they're offering that option. I know, the, you know there's a college in, in, in Los Angeles that has a partnership with uh, Tesla and, uh, you know, they're, they're actually bringing in students and you know I think it's 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 developing a great program um, but where are we on on that is, is, is IBC thinking about the new technology yes so right now we are also looking at our lithium program um, I know Dina Flying Silva and the team are working really strongly to make that happen in a reality and they're working meeting with all the um, lithium potential lithium providers in Imperial County. So that's one area, but definitely we're looking towards, you know, other programs that we can offer at the, at the college. Yeah. Thank so there, you. There's great definitely conversation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great, great presentation. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I, we had a question from the audience. I don't know if we can address it yet. No? No? We had uh, 450 uh, who were surveyed throughout the valley. Yes.
Thank you all so much. Thank we you. appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Our next presentation is a verbal update on the Calexico Fire, Fire Station Number 1 Headquarters Project. Uh, good evening, Honorable City Council, <coughs> and to the uh, public that's in attendance, and also for the public that are watching us over our social media platforms. Uh, Diego Favila, Fire Chief for Calexico. Today's presentation is to uh, is to update you on the progress of our fire station. So this fire station that we're building right now is a 9,000 square foot station housed right here at 430 East 5th Street. This is a project that was uh, set up to be a 365 day project. Right? So we started this back in February of 2020. Where else happened at February 2020? COVID, right? So COVID happened, we worked through the pandemic, we've had a lot of obstacles, mm -hmm. uh, but we are really close to the finish line. And what I mean by that is the actual construction site is pretty much complete. We have a couple of pending items. Uh, it's almost ready to be moved into. Right now we currently have uh, the gas company providing gas services to the fire station. I didn't know this, but this part of the community of Calexico has never had gas. So the closest area to gas is on 5th and Giles. So we're having to bring the gas from 5th Street to Giles to the fire station. In the past, we've always used electricity for your water heater and your stove. So uh, we've had those, we've had a couple of bumps in the road and this is just due to material, having a hard time catching the material, uh, the construction workers, you know, getting sick and calling off. It's been a headache. It's been a headache, but we are very close to the end. Um, we're happy, we're proud, we're impatient. We really wanna get this. I wanna get it, obviously, to, to get this off my desk, to finally be over this and move on to my next challenge, right? But I think I'm more happy to be able to complete this project for my guys. And I say my guys, these are your firefighters. And I say this because uh, technically right now in your city, in our city, we have two fire stations, but technically we only have one. And this is also a temporary station. So out of the two stations, none of them are complete, right? So this is gonna be good for them. Why? Because they've been making the sacrifice of, of uh, uh, dealing with the work conditions that we have and uh, still providing an excellent service to our community. So, like I said, some of the things that were uh, pending, let me just help and make sure I get all of them. Uh, the gas service to the neighborhood, the completion of the parking lot that is located on the south side of, uh, of the project is getting, it needs to be completed. Uh, we also need to make sure that we get all the furniture uh, for the firemen, get, make sure that's get put in and Oh, this one's, a, this one's a, a big option, a big item. And this is completing the roof between the police department and the fire department. I, I know a couple of uh, meetings back, we had a change order for it, and uh, we, you know, for whatever reason, we didn't act on it. Since then, we've had a couple of rainstorms. So you can only imagine what, what, what's transpired since then. Uh, we're also waiting for the, because I know, I'm not sure exactly which council member was, but they wanted us to make sure that we, we had the facade in the front appear as one, and that was for the painting of the, of the police department, so that's still pending. So as far as your footprint, we're done. It's complete. We're just waiting for some little secondary items. So that's where we're at with this, even as you guys have specific questions for me. Time of completion, more or less. And I know we have a project manager company. You know, yes, but, so, um, and I, I, I have been, I've been saying this, like, I'll be ready in June, I'll be ready in July, August. I hate to give a date, but I'm gonna, I am gonna hope that my guys, the community is getting service from that fire station by the beginning of November. Beginning of what? November. November. I'm hoping we get, yeah, we were able, we were hoping to get uh, thanks, I mean, uh, Halloween through there, but a Thanksgiving dinner will be, would be awesome for our guys, yes. 
Any other questions? No. And I'm sorry I didn't put any pictures, and I did that on purpose. And the reason I didn't want any pictures, because we got to keep it like a little surprise, right? So when we do have our opening, everybody's seen it for the very first time. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, and, and that was the reason why you, I just wanted to get an update because I remember when the the, the first you know, there was moved and it was a 365 day, you know, uh, project. Yeah, yeah uh, it was. But we know what we encountered, so, but, and also what we're going through. So at least to have a, a fire state, I mean, a fire station completed, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not an option, it's a must. Yeah. It's a must, but I do thank you. And by the way, congratulations on your, you know, appointment as, as the rep for the entire um, oh, okay. county. You you know, so I, I didn't know that, that but, you. you know. Yeah, it's, it's an honor to be, uh, to be able to be the president of the Fire Chiefs Association. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great honor for me, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation is by uh, Police Chief Serrano. Uh, this presentation was uh, requested uh, uh, on behalf of Ms. Romo uh, to talk about the Traffic Control Division and how the last meeting's ITC's mm -hmm. monies could, could assist on uh, our division of Traffic Control. Thank you. Next, next slide. So a real quick overview. Right now we, uh, we have one supervisor, uh, one full-time uh, traffic enforcement uh, officer, and two part-time um, traffic enforcement uh, officers, and then six temporary staff uh, hired through hunters. Of uh, the equipment that they have right now is uh, one Dodge van from uh, 2019, also a 2019 Chevy pickup truck, 2018 um, Go For Interceptor, which is the little <coughs> cart that you'll see uh, later on in the presentation, which they use to uh, mark all the vehicles downtown for the two-hour two-hour parking, and then. As, as, a, as, as a department, uh, the police department hands over all their, most of the used patrol cars that are still serviceable to them for them to, to use on Imperial Avenue as uh, a, uh, a patrol unit in each uh, of the intersections, major intersections that they're controlling. Also, they serve as a, a cooling area during the, the summertime where the traffic controllers could go in the, into their cars and cool off before getting back on to the, to the traffic. Next slide. So an overview, uh, in 2022, 2023, this, this fiscal year, we've, uh, the city has funded that, that department with $778,841. Uh, the temporary staffing uh, for 2021 was 380. We spent that much money on just on temporary staffing in uh, fiscal year 2020 to 2021. In fiscal year 2021-22, which is uh, the last last year that we just completed, we spent over $600,000 of uh, of traffic control funds just to control the traffic, and that's one of the reasons why we went out to ITC, ITC TC for additional funding. Since uh, uh -huh. this year, we've only uh, on the, on our budget, we were only allotted 270,000. So there's there's a big difference there that. The, that's why we created that letter last uh, last council meeting. Next slide, please. So, so what are some of the duties that, that they do? I mean, most most of the people that, that see our traffic controllers usually on Imperial Avenue directing traffic, but they have a uh, bunch of duties that they, they do for the police department. Uh, they have basically as much or a little bit less than a regular police officer duties. You know, they, they control direct traffic on Imperial Avenue, they control traffic on traffic uh, collision scenes, on critical incidents, they're the ones that close up the, s the streets. On crime scenes, they're the ones that set up our outer perimeter and do some crowd management at the same time, natural disasters. During uh, the recent storms, they're the ones uh, closing off some of the streets, uh, stopping the traffic to going into the flooded areas. During the earthquakes, they, have, they were set up at st strategic locations to keep uh, personnel and people out of the uh, downtown area. <coughs> on pre-planned events, like uh, any of the, uh, the concerts that we have at, at uh, our city, 
uh, the parades for the for the uh, Calexico High School, for any event, the, the Christmas parade, uh, they are the ones that are doing all the street closures, all the all the detours, all, all the traffic, mm -hmm. and all in partially uh, crowd control also. Next, next slide. Um, that's just on the traffic control duties. Additional to that, they are they are also our parking enforcement branch of the Calexico Police Department. So what do they do? They uh, give meter citations for people not putting money into the meter. They also check the two hour uh, uh, two hour limits on uh, all our parking lots. Our uh, anywhere that we have a two hour uh, parking limits. For example, now on Imperial Avenue, they're going to be marking the vehicles and then coming back in two hours and checking the vehicles. In red zones, uh, fire zones, at all our businesses, they're the ones that actually go out there issue citations. Um, handicap bar violations at Walmart are, are huge. People parking uh, handicap uh, parking spots and they either don't have a, park a valid uh, parking, handicap parking uh, placard or they don't display a property. So they are the ones that go out there and issue those citations. Uh, they go out into the neighborhoods and find all our abandoned vehicles on the streets and remove them from uh, from the streets. Also, they, they issue citations for trucks in the residential area. So if there's a truck or a recreational vehicle parked in the street, they're the ones that go out there and actually issue the citation or, or issue an, a notice to move the vehicle for within 120 hours. And then any other parking, uh, Violations there in the city. Uh, one of the one of the complaints that we had earlier this year was at at the swap meet, um, the, the Las Palmas swap meet regarding double parking and parking in the red, blocking driveways, and they were the ones that went out there and, and enforced all the parking citations. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So then, they're also responsible Ooh. to collect all the money prices. from the meters. So every week, they go out there and they they do two collections on two different days to collect the money from each meters. Each, on a weekly base, basis, they collect about $5,000 uh, in the downtown area for, for each meter. Next slide. Some other duties, uh, when, uh, when they, they have uh, other duties, for example, like funeral escorts, they go out there and escort uh, the bodies of, of our loved ones uh, to the nearest, uh, Cemetery, which is uh, down in Kerr Avenue, they also do uh, they they process all the the paperwork for the administrative hearings. Whenever someone issues a citation, then the if the person wants to contest the citation, they're the ones that that deal with all the all the process and taking it up to the our administrative hearing officer. Uh, and one of the other ones that that they help us with are the special events, like for example. Uh, kids and badges and coffee with a the cop. They're out there with us and answer the questions of the public. If there's any issues with parking, they're directed to them. Uh, when we do kids with badges, they actually take one of the kids and do the shopping with them. Next slide. So they have a facility uh, at the 100 block of Pollen Avenue or the, uh, uh, it used to be called Border Park, now it's called the Friendship Park. So they have a small office there, and then they have also a office at the police department. The office at the park is there, that's where they keep all their equipment, uh, whether it be flashlights, vests, when, when, when they direct traffic, um, meters to replace meters or fix meters, uh, the machine to collect the, collect the money. And then once they do that, then they have a second area in the, the police department where they actually count the money and package it to be deposited. In addition to that, they also have an office where they collect all the parking uh, violation fines. Next slide. So this is some, uh, some of the pictures at the uh, border uh, at the uh, office over at the Friendship Park. Uh, the lights are out. There's, there needs a little bit more room since we are looking at a crowded room. One out of the two rooms that they have in there uh, the right picture is, I want to say mold, but it's, it's some kind of stuff that's coming from the bathroom next door because it's, it's a public bathroom. 
and when there's leaks, it leaks over into, into the office. So we definitely need to figure out a way to, to mitigate those issues. Next slide. So, and every, everybody uh, has seen them on Imperial Avenue. And one of the reasons why we had this presentation today is to, infor, uh, to reiterate why do we need the number of, of uh, traffic controllers that we requested for in the letter last, last, uh, last week. So our, de our normal deployment on Imperial Avenue is as follows. Next slide. So we have second, um, sec second Street and Cesar Chavez. We need at least two traffic controllers there. And we've had uh, a couple of incidents there where traffic controllers have got struck by vehicles trying to avoid making line and, and cutting into and going into Mexico. Our most recent one, the traffic controller had to move out of the way before, it got, before she got struck by one of the vehicles. It turned out to be a, uh, it, we're still conducting an investigation to figure out who was that person and we're definitely gonna file criminal charges on him. So we need at least two traffic controllers on 2nd Street and Cesar Chavez. We need at least one traffic controller on Imperial Avenue and 2nd Street, and that's to avoid people going around the cone pattern on 2nd Street and Paulin and uh, trying to get uh, in the line. Because if they get in the line, people get upset, they get out of cars, and they start fighting or get into traffic collisions. Another uh, person at, uh, two people at 5th and Imperial, um, that is our major corridor that's used by the fire department and the police department to get to to Imperial Avenue and go north to respond to any emergency calls throughout the city. Uh, Seventh Imperial is another, another signal light uh, intersection that we require at least two traffic controllers there. Granite and Imperial Avenue, as the traffic gets further back or gets congested, we need additional uh, traffic controllers on, on these intersections. So then uh, Grand Street and Cesar Chavez, as we have noticed that that intersection has been problematic due to the backup of, of the traffic on, the, on our peak hours, because we have four directions of, of traffic in, in, that, uh, in that intersection and people are trying to cut in to go into Mexico. Uh, then we're talking to Highway 98 and uh, Highway 11. That intersection is huge. We try to manage with two but in all reality, we definitely need more, especially now that we have construction on, on Highway 98. It's very difficult and very dangerous for, for the traffic controllers to uh, control the, the intersection. Uh, then as we continue north, uh, we have Cole Road and Highway 111 that we still need uh, at least three traffic controls due to the size of the intersection when traffic gets backed up. However, when the traffic gets backed up in those areas, then we have to mitigate the traffic on Highway 98 and, and Cesar Chavez. Because as we have traffic backing up on Imperial Avenue, we have traffic backing up on Cesar Chavez and onto 98. Last Christmas season, we had vehicles both backed up on Imperial Avenue past Cole Road and also on Highway 98 past Dogwood Road. So, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to look into is the intersections of Highway 98, you know, 98 and Cesar Chavez. 98 in uh, Edie, 98 in Cloak, and 98 in David Navarro. What we've seen is that as traffic backs up on 98, it's a, a two-lane roadway, so people going into the residential areas, they tend to get on the opposite lane and past all the vehicles waiting to go into Mexico and causing a major hazard. And during all this time, you know, on 111, people are making or passing the vehicles on the right and on the left on the shoulder just to get away from, from the traffic. Next slide, please. So as we, I spoke earlier, we, uh, we, we have one supervisor, one full-time traffic control personnel, two part-time, and then six temporary staff. That's what we have right now. What we really need is, once again, a supervisor to supervise all the, all the traffic controllers, supervise the, the traffic, and then one full-time parking <coughs> enforcement officer or traffic control, two temporary, and then a about 12 temporary staffing um, from hunters. The reason why we need 12 is because we need to man all those, all those intersections. And then we need an, an additional two to be able to give people uh, an hour lunch, breaks every two minutes, when, it gets the, when the temperature gets over 100 degrees, be able to give them uh, breaks at least once an hour, be able to cool off, and then get back on, on, on the intersection. And then there's always people that have emergencies out of the 
get sick, family emergencies, they need time <coughs> off, and that's why we need that, that number of, of personnel for our traffic uh, control uh, duties. Next slide. So some of the things that they do when traffic is backed up, they uh, close all the non-essential streets. Uh, so third and Imperial, fourth and Imperial are closed for eastbound, westbound traffic. Sixth Street, Sherman, Roosevelt, uh, and all those are non-essential streets. So those are, are blocked off either by barricade or caution tape or cones. And then after closing all those, those streets, then we gotta close all the driveways too because those drivers pose a potential hazard to the vehicles traveling south on Imperial Avenue. So they, they need that per those number of personnel to be able to close those streets so those streets are no longer an issue and then they don't have to man those streets or have to have a supervision on those streets. And then once you get uh, traffic backed up all the way to 98, then you have people that have to redirect traffic and, and uh, make up go either east or west and be, not be able to cut into traffic. Next slide. So what happens when you don't have traffic control? Well, vehicles just do what they want and they block intersections. Just one last. Uh, this is two intersections uh, that you see. Uh, once uh, the top one's Fifth and Imperial, people are just making a left turn onto uh, trying to go to Mexico. Whether it's green or red, they just make the move and, and get in, in line and that usually causes traffic collisions because you know people have been waiting in line for 30 to 40 minutes and now all of a sudden there's somebody else trying to cut in line that hasn't been in line. And then tempers flare, they get out and then now, they, now we have fights on the street. Next slide. So here we have uh, parking enforcement doing parking, par uh, parking enforcement officers doing parking enforcement at the schools. So, so some of the places that we go uh, and do parking enforcement, like I mentioned earlier, at Las Palmas uh, Swap Meet, we also take care of all the parking in the schools. Our schools have, are notorious for double parking, people parking uh, their vehicles in the loading and unloading zones and then leaving the vehicles there and then causing people to double park. So that's kind of what we do and what traffic controllers do out there at the schools. Uh, next slide. So in, uh, in fiscal year 2021-2022, um, the Parking Enforcement Department issued over 12,000 citations for various reasons, for uh, not paying the meters, over two hours, red zones, white zones, abandoned vehicles, and so forth and so on. So that's 12,000 um, citations. Next slide. So out of those 12,000 citations, the, the community paid those citations and they created a revenue of $277,863 that went into the general fund. Next slide. And then uh, once they, they went out there and, and stored abandoned vehicles, uh, they, uh, they stored about approximately 98 vehicles last year and create a revenue of $9,788,000. So remember when I was talking to you guys about traffic control going twice a week, collecting money from the downtown? During the last year, they collected over $234,101 in quarters. And they were all deposited into, into the bank, counted and deposited into the bank. Next slide. So uh, we have two coin counting machines that you know each each week they get used to count all that money, and we're definitely trying to figure out a way, a faster way to collect all this money. We've tried uh, having the meters be able to be paid electronically. Um, for some reason, the company went out of went out of um, business, so we're still looking into ways to facilitate them instead of putting a quarter, be able to pay for credit card, memo, or any of those applications available uh, in their internet. Next slide. So here we have a, a traffic controller doing maintenance on the, on the traffic meter. Uh, when people put in coins that are not uh, quarters, uh, they get stuck in the meter, so somebody has to go in there and actually take out the meter and, and clean it out. Uh, when the meter head itself, the clock, is uh, 
not working properly, they're the ones that, that go out and take it out, verify the, the time that each quarter gets, and then replace it if, if need to. Next uh, slide. So equipment, like I said, I said earlier, they have one 2019 Chevy Silverado, one uh, 2019 uh, Dodge Caravan, and two of those uh, little tricycle 219 Go 4 interceptors, which those don't have any air conditioning, uh, but they are just used to mark vehicles on the two hours. And then, then they have four hand hand-me-downs from from the police department, which are 2012 Dodge Chargers, which are mark units. And those those are the little cars that I'm I was talking to you about. I mean, they're 2019, and they've been hit by other cars as they're issuing citations people back into these cars because they're so small and they're used so much in the downtown area. Next slide. So as, as you guys remember, we, uh, we talked about the revenue that they created. They created about $510,000 last year of revenue for, for the city of Calexico when their department all uh, is, is run with uh, $777,000. So they, there's a deficit of $200,000, so hopefully ITC sees that and they, they provide the, the, the shortfall in those funds. But also the city gets a lot of more than just people directing traffic. They get park enforcement division and they, they clean up the streets when people are abandoning vehicles and also they keep all, all the businesses in lines to make sure that they don't park in the fire lanes and keep those fire lanes open for the fire department. Yes. So, so the I, have, I have a question. So the money that's being generated, okay, is not going back to this department. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, what, what I'm saying is that the city uh, gives, uh, at the beginning of the year, fiscal year, a, a, uh, a budget of how much money they have to spend. But that budget is also offset, offset with the revenues for each department. So this mm -hmm. department, is get, this year it was given $777,000 to operate, to do everything that it needs to do in a year. However, last year they made $510,000, so that offsets the cost of the services from that department. It, goes, it doesn't go directly back into the department because that's usually not how city finances work. The city finances gives you the money and then they create revenue to offset those, those expenditures. Yeah. That's and another works. question, you're, 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 you're saying here for the Imperial uh, Avenue uh, deployment, like you have 16 traffic control locations, but yet you're, you're putting down 16, but yet you have 18 that you need. Right. So you don't have the 18? No, we don't have the 18. No. no. So, so we, we have 12 part-time, 12 temporary. We have two part-times, so that's 14, and then one full-time supervisor, one full-time, that's 16, and then two additional ones to cover breaks and stuff like that. Ms. Colio, is that, is that, is that correct? I mean. Yes, and sometimes they don't even have that yeah, amount right. of traffic controllers because, as he mentioned, one of them can get sick, they might not be available, right. and remember, those Esperanza, are not. Esperanza, excuse me, could you talk a little bit louder? We can't hear you. Okay, so what I'm saying is sometimes, if you remember, he mentioned sometimes that we will right. have someone calling sick, and not available on that day, so they run in a shorter number of traffic controllers. But in addition to that, I would like the chief to address some of the challenges that they have about the perception of the public towards traffic controllers. Sometimes the lack of respect that they have for traffic controllers that puts in a difficult position the police department, which is already short in the staff, uh, when they're not obeying the traffic controllers. Uh, and so I don't know if you want to share that. So, uh, so as Ms. Coley was, was saying, um, traffic controllers and parking enforcement uh, personnel are, are usually, they're there, they're not an enforcement branch of the police department. However, they do enforce parking citations. So people know that if they don't obey them, they know they're not going to get a moving tra violation ticket or they're not going to get any sanction for doing what they're doing. So people don't really respect them, even there, even though there's a, a patrol car parked on a, that intersection, whether it's manned by a police officer or not, it, they still don't respect. They take their chance and say, "Well, if nobody stops me, I just cut my 
my commute by hour, hour and a half and get there a lot quicker. Mm. Uh, additionally to that, since depending on these intersections, if they choose to cut or not respect the, the orders of a traffic controller, for example, like second, second city office, by the time they report that to the police department and the police department responds with their three or four officers that are on duty, they've made it into Mexico already. And that's kind of what happened on the last uh, incident. Our traffic controller got struck by the car as she was trying to move out of the way because he came off of, of Second Street and then the vehicle made it into Mexico. So, and then even with those challenges, as the traffic backs up, they are more focused on getting the motorists through, through the city and into Mexico than worrying about any of the, of the side traffic or, or parking uh, issues. And then that's where a police officer or the police department has to be able to control that traffic on Imperial Avenue. And they also have to respond to all the emergency calls. When there is traffic collisions on Imperial Avenue, now you have a traffic controller dealing with the traffic plus a police officer dealing with the with the, the traffic collision and it just compounds the, the problem of the traffic going in Mexico. And just for a clarification, this is the second incident that we have yes, for a traffic controller that gets hit by a vehicle in less than a month. Correct. So that just gives you an idea of the challenges that this department is having with the traffic controllers. But we do have technology that we can put cameras in intersections and, and pinpoint and, and go back and and identify the car and the culprit and I don't get warrants, arrest warrants and citations, you can follow it up with technology. Yes. It's like without exposing anybody yes. for that matter. But the, the issue happens if, if we just try to control ca uh, right. traffic with cameras, people are still gonna do whatever they want and it's still gonna create the problems. So that we need personnel to solve the, the, the problems there or stop the problems from being, being created. Uh, on cameras, yes, there are cameras out there in this. We could conduct an investigation. However, having three or four officers on duty, that's going to take an officer to review the cameras, and we don't have any cameras available right now on anywhere on Imperial Avenue that we need to be able to spend the money to create those, those investigative tools to later uh, be able to enforce the law. And once again, if it's an infraction, if the officer doesn't see the, the violation, half of the time, or most of the time, they cannot be issued a citation anyways. Mm. Wow. Incredible. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? No? So it's out. First, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank the, um, the staff of traffic control for all the work they do. Wow. <coughs> thank you so much. Okay. Our next items are announcements. These proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website at www.colexico.ca.gov the Friday following the City Council meeting. Community office hours with Mayor Moreno will be held by appointment. Please contact the City Clerk's Office at 760-768-2102 to schedule an appointment. Next um, item is public comments and public appearances. Uh, not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address City Council or on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter of jurisdiction of the Council. The Mayor will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay City Council meetings with personal or slanderous remarks. The City Council is prohibited by state law from, making, from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the items you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda. We will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. So I do have um, just one item, number nine, and we'll get to you when, when we get to the item number nine. Uh, the first speaker, uh, we have Leticia Rios. And I know Leticia Rios had requested to yield her, um, her time to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Beaver, but you cannot do that. That's what our council just advises. So you can come and speak on uh, your three minutes or? Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Uh, Carmen Estrada. Good 
primeramente quiero decirles buenas noches y pues no sé por dónde empezar, la verdad eh, es primera vez en 27 años, porque ya llevo 27 años, que me sa nos sacamos la lotería aquí en la ciudad de Calexico. Con, uh, son muchas, muchas personas a quienes tengo que dar gracias, pero primeramente quiero felicitar a esta señora Esperanza Corio que vine nomás a darle las gracias a ella, a la oficina, para decirle que nosotros como organización no teníamos ni un peso para pagar permisos a la ciudad de los cuales se nos estaba pidiendo. Y la verdad fue una reacción que se me enchina la piel todavía para hablarles, porque yo sí soy muy sincera cuando ella da la solución a las cosas, pero inteligentemente me pasó a la oficina y la verdad, mis respetos, y señora Esperanza, y cada uno de ustedes, y hay muchas personas que están orgullosos de lo que estamos haciendo del Binacional. Me quedé tan sorprendida de Esperanza que en 30, sin exagerar, 30, 35 minutos hizo rápidamente los cambios de los cuales yo pensaba que ya no íbamos a continuar por la economía de nuestro programa. Nuestro programa no cuenta con dinero, cuenta con el corazón y con las ganas de salir adelante. Y yo en lo personal le traigo gracias de mi programa y de mi comunidad porque usted dio solución para llevar a cabo esto, la verdad, en conjunto con todos, ¿verdad? Entonces... Eh, veo que lo que usted dijo lo está cumpliendo, se me enchina la piel, me la llevo pasando por los campos, el trabajo que están haciendo es enorme, es un, un orgullo y no sé cómo explicar y estoy muy emocionada, me impacté de la emoción y todavía no lo creo, porque es primera vez que la ciudad de Caléxico nos abre las puertas a nuestra comunidad para llevar a cabo los campos y no nomás a soccer, más este, también béisbol, y vamos con soccer y vamos con este, voleibol y cada uno de los deportes y yo tengo fe y como les dije a cada uno de los deportes vamos a unirnos a como éramos antes, hace siete años unidos todos los deportes porque Caléxico era número uno en deportes queremos que regrese eso y con la ayuda de usted y la inteligencia y todos ustedes vamos a sacar adelante este pueblo y aquí me paro por primera vez a decir verdades Gracias, Lili, porque estás trabajando inteligentemente, igual que la jefa. Tienes una persona excelente y a través de todo lo que estamos viendo, mis coordinadores vinieron ayer, coordinador de Baja California y de Austin, Texas, estuvieron viendo los campos Esperanza. Este, creo que, que va a haber una tardanza en sal, salir el zacate. Si compraron la semilla, la pueden utilizar, yo estoy pidiendo de favor, la pueden utilizar para otros campos, pero ahorita es muy importante sacar este binacional. Pienso que hay rollos de zacate que se compran y se ponen, hay máquinas que jalan ese, ese, ese zacate que no podemos, yo pienso más o menos le calculo a 25 mil dólares, que ustedes lo tienen para terminar ese campo para el 5 y el 6 de noviembre, con el presupuesto que se dio que aprobaron ustedes, pienso que sí se hace ese campo. Y ese campo, en dos días viene una compañía, a donde lo compran, viene y lo instala. Y esa recomendación puedo dar yo con las personas que tuvimos ayer. Y vamos a tener una rueda de prensa, la cual la cancelamos, porque queremos que todos estén, todos ustedes, invitando al Valle Imperial, a la comunidad. Estoy muy emocionada porque vienen muchos equipos, no sé, es okay, Carmen, ya, ya se, gracias, gracias, Carmen. Ya nos pasamos los tres minutos. Okay, estemos Muy amable, gracias. Gracias. Bye, gracias. gracias. Our next speaker is Oscar Pesqueira. Two years, we see the finish line and it gets pushed, right? We get there, it gets pushed. 
but we're almost there. And we're, as the association with our fire chief, we're not just excited because we're gonna be inside a new fire station, but we'll be able to keep our equipment safe uh, where it should be. And I'll tell you why. Uh, two days ago, we were shift changing. This was at 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. One of our personnel went to open the door from the fire truck that was parked outside in the street, and there was unfortunately a homeless man sleeping inside of it. Uh, <clears throat> there was no damage to the engine, nothing was taken, but this is what we're getting to. We need to keep that equipment safe to be able to provide for the city, to be able to provide for them, for the homeless, uh, for the parks. If we don't have the equipment, it's not going to happen. Uh, with equipment, we're way past our equipment. We have personal gear that is way past due. It's getting to the unsafe part. Folks, I cannot emphasize how much if something happens because of improper gear, we're not going to have funds to provide for parks, homeless, essential workers. We need to move on this. So we ask the help to, for you people to give the direction and the support to our city manager and our fire chief to be able to get this equipment. Right now we have a pending equipment, medical equipment, not for us personally to use, for our citizens of Calexico, the people that come in and out, pending. And I can tell you also, the more we wait, it's gonna get even more expensive. I can assure you that. It's gonna get worse. We can get quote after quote after quote, it's not gonna get any better. We need to move to be able to provide. I'll piggyback on the police chief, our traffic control, they do need our help. That's and I can tell you they have been there for us many times, over and over. And I was there personally at the two incidents uh, where two of the traffic controllers were struck on 5th and Imperial and 2nd and Cesar Chavez. When they see us coming, going to the west side of town where we currently still don't have a station, they make sure that we get by. It is essential they receive as well. And all this goes through dispatch. It's a tight knit circle, right? Mm -hmm. Dispatch, traffic, police, us. We need your help. We need that push. We're falling behind. And it's going to get worse. We need that. Well, how much is the equipment? I'm sorry. Do you uh, have a price tag? Th that question, I, I believe, would be answered better with Folio okay. or our fire chief, but I can tell you those quotes are not getting any better. Mm -hmm. So, and then we won't be compliant to some of the county EMS. In the long run, it's going to cost the city more. I, I don't want to see that. Uh, at this point, any questions, any comments, concerns that we can answer? No, just to tell you that I, I have been speaking with, uh, to answer your question in the public, so be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I always believe that you got to give the fire and the police what they need. Okay, that's the top priority, and as long as we're up here, we're going to be working towards that. Now, I've also speaking with Ms. Coley on this. We've been back and forth, too, as you see me going back and forth, because I always want to know, we can have police office, we can have police, good police buildings, uh, fire stations, but we don't have the manpower and equipment, right. no worth it. Right. So we're, we're exactly. looking forward to that. Hopefully, next by next meeting, we'll have some, some numbers for you, and we're working with the chief, both chiefs of police or to address those issues. Thank you. We, we appreciate yes. it. We really do. Uh, on a final note, uh, the association is going to personally extend an invite for November 4th, 7 o'clock in Imperial at the Humble Farmer. Uh, we're having a Stachtober, as you can see, uh, growing a mustache for cancer awareness. Uh, the best mustache, the worst to mustache, all proceeds go to our <laughs> local cancer awareness programs out here. Uh, we would love to see you out there. Thank you very much. You
Thank, Thank you. you. Our, our next speaker is Mr. Uh, Jun Kim. Good evening, as council members, Good evening. and city employees, and uh, publics. I've been, I've been here a while. I wasn't been here a while. And the sad story is when, when I heard from the firefighters, it's a shame on us, a shame on ourselves. We don't know how to fund it, our safety. It's, I've been keep telling to you guys, our first job is uh, more than anything, safety of the community is not following. So, uh, okay. I have some uh, notice or history of the city of Kalachiko, how bad it is, because I believe that the new city manager digging the all the, the grant and did not function it, and then we have a lot of the grant without using the turn it, and that was his uh, shame, but a missing point, who is responsible? Those irresponsible caused by that time city council, and they are illegal loans from the housing fund. They had illegal loans from the business loan, and they're not collecting. The people who interested, compass, or elected person, commissioner, they got a bunch of money illegally, and they don't return the money. And city of Kalichiko doesn't pay attention and collect the money on that. That's why we get, we get the problem. I asked the city, I was, 2011, I asked the city to do it, and they didn't do it. So when I'm elected, I try to do it, I've been blocked. It. So I contact with the uh, state con controller, and they uh, were spending time. I managed time to, to uh, June or uh, May, June 2015. I met the treasurer Chan and asked him to him, uh, audit the city of Kalachiko. And he sent a letter to me, and Ju uh, July, uh, July 2nd, 2015, he. Uh, Send the letter. He's gonna send it to uh, controller's office to audit the city. But they audit the city, but we still not interested in collecting any money. And I was trying to get the American uh, report, and the city of collection they blocked me. They were directed. But a lot of elected person, commissioner, they are entitled to be any dollar money, tax money, they're supposed to be in public. And they don't want to use the name. Right now, they are in politics, and they are in candidates. So, I was up to you guys. And they illegally, they loan, they get the loan, and didn't pay. And the second loan again, beside the first loan, and through the house. And the city of Chicago didn't pay to say nothing. So, what we failing to our duty to financially? And that causing the day, like today, uh, telling about the people, say we don't have money for the safety uh, equipment. So do our job right. And I'll give you another, another source for the, you guys collect the more money for that, legally. And I'm actually see the collection code losing the revenue. Because well, remember you guys, I was approving the, the Forever 21, the, Future revenue, it's not money revenue for now, but the future, future revenue is cutting out. We're giving the money. And city of Kalexico needs to collect a lot of money for the lawyer, for the, from the Grand Plaza, they don't pay attention on it. And we, we're sending them $500,000, $500,000 every year. And they didn't pay, oh, close to $6 million, close to $7 million, Infrastructure fees. Okay, Mr. Kim, your three minutes are up. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Uh, James Beaver. Yes, uh, good evening, members of the City Council. My name is James Beaver, and I'm a resident of the city of Calexico. I left each and all of you, including the de director. Uh, and the attorney, uh, a, a short brief <coughs> in, of information on the ADUs, ADs, thank you very much. And so I'm going to make this real short, uh, under three minutes. Uh, 
I did not attend any special meeting between the city council and the Calexico Community Unified School District regarding a school to impact piece, and I didn't know if it was open to the general public. Okay, I'm here this evening under public comments only as a citizen and resident of the city of Calexico with a special interest in a homeowner builder who is paying three impact fees on a single property, um, be, uh, beginning with the purchase of her house, of course, with the, with the Pierre County, uh, and then the junior ADU uh, garage enclosure impact fees, and the enclosure of a patio for recreation purposes, uh, purposes impact fee. Making the homeowners a victim of multiple impact fees on top of the, the cost of material construction and labor on a single dwelling unit, that's the point. In all the closures, the two closures are under 500 feet. Uh, then there's also a clarification that states, well, let me just, I skipped that. The, the city in itself is interpreting, never interpreting the, these enclosures ADU. Uh, we've known that when we went to pay the, the fees. But the uh, Unified School District is saying an ADU is any enclosure in the house, any room, anything, and, and that imposes impact fees. So far, uh, the person in question who's here in the evening in this audience uh, has paid $7,925.96 for two impact fees on the same single dwelling property, meaning that not all impact fees are levied on a per square foot basis. But then again, none of these rulings may apply uh, uh, in, for impact because the city of Collective is now considered level two zoning. And I think that the public should be, uh, uh, should be aware of that. We were quite uh, confused when we went to the city to give us one version and we go to school district to give us another version. Uh, now they say that we're level two zoning. Um, so basically, I, I, I've given you all the information that I've downloaded. Uh, so if you'll look into that, please. And, and for this council to see if she's been overcharged, this individual, and other people as well. And uh, to please have public hearings whenever the school district and the city meets, uh, that they be well adverse because we've started, they've started monies that you just can't turn around, you'll lose out. Uh, items purchased, doors purchased, things like that. And then we're thinking everything is going fine, okay? So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Buehr. Thank you, Mr. Buehr. Okay, that concludes our public speaking. With will accept your two. Well, item number nine, we'll get to them. Did you have one? Hi, my name is Rebecca Lemon. I've been here to yell at that one multiple times, and I'm going to yell at you again. You giggled last time when I said that you wanted the ARPA funds to go to the farm workers. You giggled like a little child. I was right. Your plan calls for them to get $1 million essential worker relief program. Your thing is that farm workers, you put the camps out there, you let them turn rampant in our city. What are you going to do this time? Apparently, everyone thinks you've lost your mind. I would like to have you drug tested. I hear you're on cocaine. I don't know, but I wish those cops would over there would go take you to the station and have you drug tested. Next time, I just might do that. What is, I don't know who you're getting into bed with, but you're causing a lot of problems for Calexico. Not literally, you know, you know what I mean? You know, who we're making deals with. Why? You, you started out, I read your, your biography, which is really misworded. Jeez. Oh, oh, two year old could write it. Obviously, you, you know, you got your BA in four years. Everybody else does. I mean, that's not accomplishment, that's normal. But what is your problem? Like, that seems like you seem like a pretty normal person. And then you just took like a wrong turn with somebody and you just turned, whoosh, you lost your mind. Are you gonna be this extremist? Are you gonna be an extremist if we end up? You know, if you end up getting reelected, are you going to keep up this this attitude of you just want to be the, the fight cat of everybody? You're going to save Calexico because we need a saving from something. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to calm down, listen to people, and actually change this city for the better? Because you know we're tired of it. You want to revitalize downtown? Why? Why? It's a waste. It's it's trash. It needs 
to be just burned down and started over. If you bring a drug place down here, for a safety place to have people do their needles, you're going to have major problems. I promise you that. You do not want those people doing drugs over there in any safe space. You don't want drugs in this valley. Get a rehab center, get something. Do not send them downtown. That place has suffered enough. I'm trying to tell you, the next time you giggle at me, I will prove you wrong every single time, so stop looking like a child. You look at grown-up people. Act like one. Our next speaker is um, Daniela Flores. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Daniela Flores. I'm a community organizer uh, with Imperial Valley Equity and Justice Coalition. Um, I'm here just to um, honestly uh, make a couple comments just given um, the previous comment and the amount of disrespect that um, has taken place in the last few meetings. Um, so I just really want to express, um, honestly, my gratitude. And I think that a lot of us come up here when we have a lot of uh, the issues that haven't been addressed and we want to um, show our voice and, and really express all the different needs that our city definitely has, um, and there's so many different priorities. And I just want us to, um, I wanted to take the moment to actually thank uh, the people that I thank usually um, off the public, but um, you know, just wanna come up here and really show and express some gratitude for the people that are working really hard, things that people don't always see, and I have the privilege to be able to uh, work closely with um, Council Member Ureña, Romo, and uh, the city manager, and I just want to, um, you know, emphasize that they are making policy changes to improve the conditions of our community, and I see it, even though some people might think that they're not working, they are, and so I, again, have seen two of the recent meetings um, it's been disappointing to see the lack of respect. I feel like even though um, as an organizer, I, I come with strong words um, when things need to get done and when I need to express my priorities, but I do think that there's a level of disrespect that um, was shown by the um, president of the uh, police association most recently. Um, I think I would have been arrested if I ever spoke like that in public, in a public comment. Um, so again, I think, you know, for the community members that just heard the previous comment, I just want to say, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't believe that person is a resident of Calexico, um, and I also just want to say it's really um, interesting to have an opinion about the downtown when clearly uh, businesses and others have been here to express their hopes for for the downtown improvements, and that is something that will take place with the American Rescue Plan Act. So again, just really wanted to express my gratitude. I know that our coalition um, has seen improvements and we know that it's at a slower pace, but again, even though it might not show, um, you know, I don't think they're out here really telling you all of the amount of work that they're doing, but they are. And um, you know, I just wanted to vouch and, and really express my gratitude. So thank you all. Thank you. Anyone else in public? Okay, the next item is uh, City Manager's report. Good evening. Uh, in regards to the far station two, uh, the, the far station two that is uh, currently closed due to mold issues and uh, Great water. I want to mention that we have a schedule, Ms. Palomi has scheduled a mall mitigation inspection for tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, we have to pay for the buildings to be inspected, even to provide us with a quote, which is a cost that we, 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 we will have to absorb, but it's necessary in order for us to develop a scope of work. We're not allowed to get into the building due to the mall issues. 
So that's currently in process. I will be coming next meeting with a plan of how we can address the issue. And so why are we doing mold mitigation? The original plan was to bring a mobile home unit as a temporary living quarters for the fire, the fire station. However, um, the mobile home that we have already selected, by the time that it was approved by the city council and the amount that it was approved as well, we went back and it was already rented. They don't have any available units and they will not have any available units until one year from today. In addition to that, installing, um, we were not able to locate another place with a cheaper price. And I think the one that we were able to secure was like $200,000. So we thought that that was not feasible for rent. So we check the pos into the possibility to buy another one. Well, that's not also more than $200,000 in a year away for us to bring it. So what we decided to do between the chief and myself is to go and do the mold mitigation to be able to go out to bid for, to repair uh, the mold issues that we have, the roof and basically the kitchen area and the wall that is near to the restrooms and address the issues with the gray water. We will be coming next meeting on November the 2nd with a plan on how to absorb those costs, uh, where to get the funding for. We have been working with the uh, Ms. Fonseca at the Finance Department to have a plan. So that's, that's a relief for the fire department. I want to let you know that I really appreciate your patience. I know that sometimes during the peak hours of the traffic, I know that they're going to take one of the engines on the other side of the, uh, the town so they can provide the services to the community, but it's something that we need to address immediately. In addition to that, uh, with the situation that happened on the, with the transit going into the engine, I totally in agreement with them. There might be stealing equipment in the future from the engine, so we, what we, um, the chief did this time is was to secure the engine inside of the new building, although it's not complete, um, well, technically it's complete, but it's, it doesn't have a gas, to secure the engine inside of the parking area of the new fire station for the moment. Um, in regards to the equipment, we were supposed to bring today to, for your consideration and approval the uh, um, ambulance plan, the contract for 10 years, which it will be, it will be 101 million and 5,000 somewhere over there. Uh, on a yearly, for 10 years, on a yearly basis, those will be $105,000, but we asked for additional information that we needed according to the attorneys and, and the contract, and also in regards to the radios, the medical equipment, that is another $400,000 that we need mm -hmm. all together in equipment, and it's crucial that we have this, this equipment. So we're also working on the numbers to bring it, to bring it back into the plan because we're going to be bringing the quarterly report and in that quarterly report we had to accommodate some of this ex equipment that is necessary for the fire department so it's all coming in a plan next in the next coming meeting in regards to the new river improvements project uh, the department the public works department already released a bid for the new river improvement projects on uh, october the 17th two days ago we should be expecting having the bids back in November, and we'll see where we are so far in that situation. We continue having meetings with CBP regarding the closure of the lines at the West Port of Entry. Mm -hmm. we, we understand that there are some issues in regards to uh, long lines on the Mexican side. Uh, we have addressed the concerns. Um, we have been on the calls and they're trying to mitigate the issue, but unfortunately, this is just part of the um, construction that they're going on, and on the weekends, they're trying to keep eight lines open. Uh, staff has been posting all the updates. Uh, Ms. Gabby has been posting all the updates on the website, so whoever wants information about which lines are gonna be closed during the weekend, they can go onto our website because the information is there. We have about six upcoming events. Uh, we had uh, October the 22nd, the Dia de los Muertos events on First Street and Heber Avenue from five o'clock. It's not our, our, our event, but it's an event that the community can participate on. 
On the 27th, we had the Mexican Consulate Farm Workers Breakfast, which is the item that you have as an emergency item. I've encouraged everybody to attend. Um, we have on the October the 29th, the Heber Park Expansion Project. There's a check presentation from Assemblyman Eduardo Garcia that we have a schedule for 4 o'clock on a Saturday. It will be a good event for the community to meet over there and to see what we have so far in terms of designing. But we also uh, having discussions with the state regarding the additional funding that is needed to complete the project because uh, the project is already up, up about a million dollars. On, this, uh, on October the 31st, our community center through our recreation department is having the Halloween party Halloween. beginning at four o'clock. So everybody gets a costume because we're gonna go over there and have an event over there. We can have a good time over there. November the 5th, we had the binational soccer tournament from the 5th and the 6th. So we're gonna be very busy. Did I get the right, the right dates, five and six? November? November is cinco y seis? Yes, yes, that's correct. And November the 20th, we had the Thanksgiving turkey giveaway by the Christian Church on 1st Street and 2nd Street. I will be sending calendar invitations to everybody so we don't miss any of those days. It's important for all of us to go back to the community that has been faced with isolation for almost two years. So this is a good opportunity for all of us to go outside and meet again with everybody. Thank you. And Christmas parade? Um, that is upcoming. We have potentially um, a Christmas parade. Ms. Gerardo is uh, providing me with a more or less a budget. It's about $13,000 that we need. Uh, I have spoken with Mayor Moreno, who is already looking for donors. And Ms. Romo came to, to me today and uh, telling me that there's potentially about $5,000 donation. So hopefully we can have a Christmas parade, but we'll provide you with an update uh, as the day gets closer and then in the upcoming meeting to see if it's gonna be feasible. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Cindy Alba from the Calexico Neighborhood House told me that she would like to collaborate on the Christmas parade. Sure. Okay, great. So just keep in mind, we need around $13,000 to make it work. Okay, thank just, you. J just a question, uh, Esperanza. Yes, Yes. On the uh, mold mitigation inspection that will take place, uh, you know, tomorrow or hopefully soon, um, if there's a way that maybe that can go into emergency, um, some sort of emergency, and, and as you know, based on on your ability to, um, you know, spend some, you know, certain amount of money up to twenty five twenty five thousand dollars, if you can just look into all of that and how we can expedite. You know all of that. I, I know that there's some procurement, um, you know, processes that we have to abide. But the more that we can expedite, you know, uh, make sure that you know we are able to just streamline because it is really important that you know we address that issue as soon as possible. So look into every um, uh, avenue or uh, possibility of um, maybe going through an emergency, um, you know, uh, approach or declaration or whatever it takes. So that way, um, you know, if we can streamline the process, I don't want to say circumvent, but in streamline the process where it comes to procurement, when it comes to having that done um, as so, soon as possible. So that's the step that we actually took okay. by having a schedule tomorrow, the inspection. I made a recommendation and I took a step to spend the funds that we need to spend, not to exceed the $25,000. Based on the previous experience that we have with the library, I believe that we're gonna be between the range and okay. I'm just gonna come back and let you know I spent twenty thousand dollars on addressing the issue. Now a mall mitigation it might take between one to two weeks to do it. One that does that that we're coming on November the second, potentially with the bidding process to go up to bid and to expedite the re the repairs of the facility. So we, we are, we are in tra on track. Actually, Ms. Falomira, I had to thank her because she immediately started scheduling everybody to be on board. And so we should be, we should be fine meeting those deadlines. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Everybody else? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Next item is commissioner reports. Do we have any commissioners today? Nope. Moving, on. Moving along. Uh, City Council comments and reports of meetings attended. Mayor. Thank, thank you, Mayor Moreno. Um, as everybody probably knows by now, there's a couple of topics 
that I get very excited about, that I'm very passionate about. And there's three particular that are being worked on right now that I would like to report, having to do with transportation, housing, and education in the community. The one on transportation, as you saw with the police chief, we're having a serious, grave, heartbreaking issue with the traffic incidents, specifically our traffic controllers who are getting struck, literally run over by the aggressive border traffic that uh, is increasing, that is becoming uh, a problem as uh, the housing crisis continues to deepen in our community and people just need to go back and forth to find a place to live and just uh, you know, make it within their means. We're working directly with the school district, as uh, Mr. Beaver correctly said. We're work working directly with the Calixco Unified School District, almost on an emergency basis, to see what it is that we can settle to prevent uh, impact fees for going up, specifically for uh, with their focus on uh, smaller developments. We're talking about ADUs. We're talking about first-time home developers. Uh, not necessarily big business or anything in the interest of making sure that our community has enough housing. And on the education side, I was very honored uh, alongside Daniela Flores, or eventually we, we ended up uh, with meeting with uh, Ms. Flores and her coalition. I had the honor of meeting uh, Doctora Veronica Terriquez from the UCLA Chicano Institute, if that's the correct name. UCLA Chicano Studies Research Center. UCLA Chicano Research Studies Institute. Uh, Veronica, uh, Doctora Ter Terriquez is from, originally from UCSC, uh, transferred to UCLA very recently in the field of sociology. She has taken an interest in our community of Calexico, um, helping us as a city government understand our predominantly, predominantly Latino community and how to serve them better. On the municipal side, I, I also had the honor of shadowing her as she went to the Calexico High School to connect with potential UCLA and UC bound students and uh, try to see what kind of scholarship opportunities there were for them. And just in general, um, get our, st our students college ready. So with all of these, uh, I'm very excited about all these projects uh, that are to come. I commend uh, our city manager, Esperanza, for working diligently a lot of times uh, past 5 p.m., past 8 p.m., past 9 p.m., and directors as well, uh, just to keep up with the velocity uh, of our city and the issues in our city. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to also um, extend a, a heartfelt uh, thank you and uh, last week uh, the 12th um, um, about uh, almost about 10 students from the uh, IBROP uh, Project Connect uh, Youth Program came to visit our city as part of uh, career exploration and uh, you know a strategy to just get him, uh, you know, exposed to, um, you know, different careers and, and, and what's really going on in their community and meeting some of the people that, you know, uh, are their public servants. So um, it was a very well um, put together event. You know, again, my, my, my thank you to, to the, the fire, PD, uh, you know, planning, library, reg, you know, Esperanza, of course, a library I did mention already who am I missing but you know that that good thing about this is that these are these are um, our youth um, that are looking for that opportunity to have a mentor to have uh, someone to look up to and uh, the takeaway from this you know um, it was that you know there are people who have very similar stories to to theirs um, and that anything can be um, accomplished. So again, thank you. That's something that I look forward to continue doing. And then also um, out of that uh, event, uh, they expressed desire to maybe come back and volunteer, uh, maybe create a, a uh, mentorship program, a volunteer program uh, where they can uh, shadow, where they can uh, help also. So that's something that you know, hopefully we can get off the ground. Uh, there are some funding, uh, some funds available where uh, that can be, um, uh, that can assist to offset some of the cost. Of course, not cost to the to the city, and also maybe even some uh, compensation to to the, the students uh, or to the youth. So again, great event. I appreciate it. 
Uh, then also, uh, yesterday I had a chance to um, attend that um, Measure H uh, committee meeting. Um, uh, they met. Um, I know they're short some, uh, you know, members, but they had a very, very good, uh, you know, discussion about the items that were presented. Of course, you know, our, our finance department and staff that, you know, facilitated the meeting. So I'm glad to see that they're meeting, that they're discussing, that they're providing a direction of recommendations, not direction, but a recommendation. So looking forward to continue to see the level of engagement. That's my report. Thank you. I attended the Cancer Awareness with the Mexican Consulate. It was such a, I mean, very, very good event, emotional event. You know, we parade all the way down to the border. We, we met with the Mexican uh, site, the citizens that were there, and we, uh, we gave out the balloons. It was a very, very um, emotional uh, event. And uh, I want to thank the Mexican Consulate for inviting us in the volunteer. What is it? Uh, Pintania was uh, the organizers. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, I went to the, the grand opening or the, the ground breaking for a new car wash that is right next to Popeyes. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to City Hall, and, and I want to thank uh, the city for, for allowing me to be here for the IBROP I presentations. I think that these kids were very impressed by uh, mm -hmm. the talk that was provided to them. By, by our staff. And then uh, I also, on, on Saturday, um, Mr. Jimmy Duron, uh, the commissioner for the Calistical Arts Council, invited me for the collection of the mural of the tower, even though it rained on us. But you know, just to see the collection, the, the paintings that they did, oh man, it's, it's beautiful. And I, I really hope that everybody would participate and, and see them when they're, when they're doing their paintings. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. And I'll go next, and then I'll leave you last. I think you want to yeah. do the last. Okay. Yes. So real quick, also attended the Ventanilla de Salud for the, uh, the Cancer Awareness with um, Council Member Arila Fernandez, and also attended the, uh, the Quick uh, quack Car Wash uh, uh, ground baking ceremony. They have two in town here. So I did give a speech on behalf of the city of Calexico. Um, also, I... Um, was going to give an update, as I said last time, for the, uh, the Farm Workers Service Center. And so my update was, uh, had a great meeting with city manager, uh, Esperanza Colio, GAFCOM, uh, Senior Vice President, Paul Najjar, and Victor Nava, Director of uh, Strategy for, uh, for GAFCOM, uh, Development and Partnership, as well as Cot Mint Nick with Cosmont Companies. He's an expert in city financing. Uh, so moving forward with the Farm Workers Service Center, what's that going to do to us? So in further discussion with Catholic Charities, they're very interested. Uh, the Cardinal was, uh, it, it, it was, um, it was, we were told that the, uh, the Pope in, in, Italy, in Rome was really interested of, of this being number one priority for Imperial County, precisely here in, in Calexico. So you assign a Cardinal for that purpose. That's, that's really, really gonna put us in a map forever. I think we're gonna solve the issue with decades of marginalizing, marginalizing that community, we all know. Uh, they've been marshaled for many decades, which is the farm workers. Um, so the Farm Workers Service, Service Center is in full speed. Um, the uh, also is going to encompass a housing and food bank project to align ourselves with funding opportunities. Gap Gap can tour the uh, uh, leadership tour the uh, the the, um, the area, and and they were able to also meet with uh, representative for North American Development Bank which is a big game player in, uh, in this uh, project because they were able to provide some of those funds, funds for, the, uh, for this uh, Farm Workers Service Center. And obviously they were impressed with the overall project. Um, uh, they did tell us that there are grant monies available to support planning and water components. What does that, what does that do to us? Well, as you know, we have a water tower and we do have the, um, I believe the uh, water board for the, the state, I think it was, that they're interested in happiness with that. Is that what it was? <coughs> Correct me on that. Um, la what happened is with the water tower. Gafcon? Yeah. So what they want is to keep the tower for longer so they can secure the funding. Right, so they can secure the funding, right? All net bank funds right. are related to water. And that'd be less money spent on our half. Yes. Right. So we'll save there too. <laughs> so that was also good news. Um, and also we received a word from Assemblymember Garcia 
the office that there are funds available to support this project uh, through AB 941, which was co-authored by him last uh, March, um, unbeknownst to us, obviously, but which could uh, up to 25% of, of the Farm Workers Center Center's building funding. In addition, we have submitted this project as potential project for Southern California uh, to be funded by the Inflation Reduction Act, which is also going to uh, be able to get more funds for us. And GAFCON also met with California Director of USDA and several members of, the, of her team to discuss this project. And we are uh, exploring f uh, future possibilities to grant, uh, for the grant funding for this project. So that's my update on that one. Looking forward to this uh, finally coming to fruition. And uh, as soon as we have more, uh, more uh, updates, I'll give it to you next time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next item is uh, consent agenda. All matters listed. Is, is yes. my time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the last one. That's no right. Got all excited with it. Thank you, Maria. Okay, first, thank you. And welcome everyone to this meeting. We appreciate it, it um, very, very much. And on October 7th, we attended an event held by Dr. Uh, Timbo and his wife. And that event, the city of Calexico was recognized for the um, work carried out in favor of the Bow Clinic of Calexico. Mr. Ureña and I also attended an event in Salton Sea in October 10, uh, celebrate the uh, pueblos indígenas or indigenous uh, people's day. Uh, the President Biden, I celebrate that President Biden uh, has made uh, a proclamation in favor for los pueblos indígenas. It's very, very uh, Good proclamation. And number three, in October 13, Ms. Colion and Ms. Taylinda, no está aquí, Ms. Uh, Mr. Ureña and I, attended the Calexico Unified School District Board of Directors to weigh in one matter which has to do with a possible imposition of fee increase to all resident construction. I am very grateful to the members of the Calexico Unified School District Council. We decided to work on this important issue as a team with, uh, with our city council. And finally, I thank Mr. Hector Chavira, who is here and the controls behind the door for providing us with um, tutorial to show, to view past meetings with subtitles in Spanish. It is a, a, free, to, a, a free tool to use on YouTube for now. And Gabby, can you please? The, I put the video, please.
En este tutorial vamos a aprender eh, cómo poder ver las juntas de concilio de la ciudad de Caléxico en español. Bueno, con subtítulos en español. Primeramente nos vamos a la página de la ciudad de Caléxico, que es caléxico.ca.gov. Muy bien, como vemos ya estamos aquí. Empezamos a, a, a ir hacia abajo, estamos viendo la información. Y justo aquí donde dice View Council Meetings, podemos accesar. Entramos... Y aquí están todas las juntas de Caléxico. Y esto es para juntas que ya pasaron. Vamos a buscar una junta, digamos, vamos a ver esta del miércoles 17 de agosto. Me ponen los en view. Y aquí tenemos la junta que vamos a ver. Pero para poderla accesar en español, vamos a hacer esto. Para que sea más sencillo, nos vamos a YouTube en este icono que vemos aquí. Y una vez que estamos ya en, en la página... Van a saber aquí esta, este pequeño cuadrito que tiene un doble C, que es Close Captions. Muy bien, lo activamos y nos vamos a este pequeño engrane, en Settings. Aquí le ponemos Subtitle y donde dice English Autogenerado, vamos a entrar. Aquí es donde vamos a poder ver los eh, subtítulos en, en otro idioma. Buscamos el título que necesitamos, que en este caso es el español. Aquí lo tenemos. Y como ven, los subtítulos se empiezan a generar en idioma español. Y es una manera de ver las juntas en el idioma elegido. ¡Es sencillo! Mr. Héctor Chavira, thank you. <laughs> ok. <laughs> ok, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> sí, ¿verdad? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're on the consent agenda now. All matters listed on the consent calendar uh, to be considered routine by the city council. Collects the community redevelopment agency successor agency. Or collects the financing authority and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately by the council. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Vereña, then second by Mr. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those, uh, motion carried, 5 all. Thank you. No items pulled. Next item is discussion and potential action items. So we're here on item number nine. And Mr. Um, Ra Ramiro? Ramiro. Oh. Good evening. My name is Ramon Robledo. I am the president of the Calexico Baja Runners. I'm accompanied by our vice president, Jesus Larsono, Arnold Brown, our treasurer, Javier Pacheco, our secretary, Danny Romero, and Mr. Brown, our legal and communi communication officer, and Humbert Felix, our sergeant at arms. As you know, Calexico lost its UFW chapter. The Calexico Baja Runners stepped in to continue honoring our fallen soldiers. So we work two major events, Veterans Day that's coming up on the 11th of November, and then Memorial Day. One week before the event, the Baja Runners and volunteers, along with Hems Mortuary, clean the grave sites of our fallen soldiers. Then we provide a light lunch as our appreciation for their help. Following the following week, we meet at Mount, Mount View Cemetery at 6 a.m. to place flags at, our, at the grave sites of each fallen soldier. Then we prepare a breakfast for all the volunteers from Calexico and Heber, who also, we also have Boys and Girl Scouts, family members, and other who volunteer. We cook two dishes, huevos con chorizo, frijoles, y un guisado de carne. 
We also provide coffee, milk, and orange juice. At 10 a.m. the day of the event, we hold a, ser we hold a service to honor our, our fallen soldiers. We begin with a presentation of the flag of the United States to honor, by the honor guard, we place the wreath, we play taps, the gun salute, then we have a guest speaker. And at the end, we finish with a blessing. I am here today at, to ask the city council for a donation. We are asking for $350 for the event, per event, I'm sorry, a total of $700. The money will be used to provide meals to the members of our community who participate and volunteer to honor our fallen soldiers. This includes the meal of the week before of the event and the day of the event. Meanwhile, please accept our appreciation for the use of the generator and the porta potty the city provides. Once again, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, Yes, one clarification. Yes, for clarification purposes, the budget that we prepared for $513.38 was only for one event. So we're talking about two events that will be like $1,026 uh, $1, and change. So we currently have in that account only $1,000. What, what happens is that we were under the impression that it was only one event. But he's mentioning two events that will be multiplying the amount that we have for $513 twice. That means $1,026 for both events, Memorial Day and the other one is? Okay. One is better than the first one. That's yeah. in November. Yes. And the next one is September for a better I mean, Memorial Day. Memorial. 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 And May. And May. Yes, I'm but, sorry. but we can do is we can go ahead and uh, maybe go for the first event, which is Veterans Day, and then we wait for the next one when the other one comes uh, closer. Is that what you're asking for? for two events. Well, we, we, we would like for two, but if, if you're willing to we're, we're, yes. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna suggest two. That's what you're saying. Yes. Because you have two events. Yes, sir. Okay. But my, my recommendation is to go for the event of the November event for $513 because essentially we don't, we don't have the amount available on the account. Right. So, so we we'll go for the first one. And then we'll explore the other time. option later on. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. All right? Okay. Is that fine? Okay. All right. But before we, okay, thank you. Before we, anything else? Because we have we have another speaker before we we follow up on it. We, but thank you very much for for your service, obviously. And I know I've served with uh, some of you guys out there in law enforcement. And uh, but thank you for you guys be doing this every year. And so however we can do it, help you guys. Thank you for the effort. I know the Baja Runners are very involved with okay. the community. And I really appreciate that too, as a, as a nonprofit. So thank you. I have a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, we have one more speaker. Yeah. Oh, one. Yeah, one. Hold on. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay. One more speaker on number, item number nine. That's Mr. Third nine? No, we haven't voted on it. Mr. Kip, you're next. Okay, uh, this is another history. So actually, the November Veterans Day, City of Calisto did do nothing. So when I was council, we starting, I believe, uh, 13, we, uh, 13 or 14, we starting to have a ceremony on the no, uh, November uh, for the Veterans Day. But suddenly they've been, they've been stopped it, uh, that's what I understood. And if the city of Kalechiko doesn't have a fund for that, I will, uh, I will fund it from the donator from my business. <coughs> so they can have a celebration. I actually, personally, the Jun uh, Kim as a Korean, we benefited the U.S. Army was in Korean War, and uh, we've been saved. And if the uh, U.S. Army wasn't there, U.N. Army wasn't there, 
we might can fall into the community, uh, commu communist country. So we didn't make the, like that kind, this kind of the progress in Korea and myself. And I'm very grateful for the US uh, armies and also that we have to give the all the respect for all the soldiers, whoever they risk their right, life for the our nation. So if the city of North Carolina does not come for that, I'll do my I'll do my through the my uh, my business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, yes. um, in in the interest of time, uh, would you be willing to entertain a motion uh, to approve not only item number nine, but also uh, items twelve to eighteen, which are the grant approvals? In the interest of time. Uh, it, it would be nine and then 12 to 18. Yeah, the only, I mean, I know we've done that in the past. The only comment is I know we, we did that and we, we ran into an issue because there was clarifications that because we adopted them all together, um, we didn't have a record of the clarification. So, are, 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 are there any clarifications for 12 to 18? It just, uh, there was no discussion on the item, so then when we had an interpretation issue, we couldn't really evaluate it without, because they were all taken together. So my recommendation would be at least go one by one, okay. even if we do it fast, because there were some questions that came up on an item that because there was a specific item heard, we didn't have any guidance on it. So in order to have a clear record, it makes sense. We can just, but we can move that pretty quickly on the item. So. We can just read and then just. Okay. So you want to make motion? Or? So I'll, I'll just make a motion for, to just approve number nine. Number nine? Hmm? Second. Yeah. Okay, motion by Mr. Urania, second by Mr. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Got it? Thank hey you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you there. Yeah. We'll be there. You guys are welcome yep. to dinner at Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> right now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Next item, item number 10, adopt resolution approving settlement agreement between the Calexico Unified School District, the City of Calexico, and the successor agency to the, to the Community Development Agency of the City of Calexico, uh, parenthesis Imperial County Superior Court case number ECU 10114, in a parenthesis, parenthesis interim, oh, by interim finance director. So you're yes, in case the, this is in case you have questions about this item. You want to go for it? Oh, I'll go for it, yes. My name is Steve Ducat. I'm with TKC Engineering. I'm huh? the uh, Director of uh, Development Services. Before, before that, I work for a company known as Urban Futures, Inc. I have been your public development at all consultant for over 15 years without a break. But I've never seen any of you only because of COVID, actually. So I'm glad that's over with. I haven't been here for three years, and I'm glad to be here now. The good news about this is we get the opportunity, this is the next to the final step, to approve a settlement of a lawsuit that should have never happened. The good news further is that the cost associated with the settlement, and basically it has to do with retiring some bonds, 100% of the cost comes from revenues that are being held in trust, actually owned by, but held in trust, by the school district. There is no city money involved. There's no successor agency involved, money involved. Other than there's been some expenses relative to defending this case that I could go into detail, but that would waste your evening, actually. But, you know, a little bit of that. That's covered out of your successor agency administrative allocation. So no city money for that. And you can't spend any successor agency money other than the amount specifically authorized by the Department of Finance from the budget that's submitted every year. And you, you see that and review it on an annual basis. And uh, the, uh, the need to move this ahead, we've taken some steps in advance of this. Number one, the school district has already approved it. And you will notice in your uh, packet on this matter that the settlement agreement has been signed by them. And, and, not, and not to, uh, to forget a person that needs uh, credit on this, your city attorney and the experts on, of his firm that specialize in these matters collaborated with their counterparts, 
with the school district to develop this agreement. This agreement will then call for the retirement of those bonds. You can only retire bonds if they've been out for at least 10 years, they have now, and you retire them on a date that debt service is due. The next time this happens is February 1st, 2023. You might say, oh my goodness, we got plenty of time to do this. Well, there is one more step, and that is this has to go to the Department of Finance. They're the, the rulers of all these kinds of matters, and so they need to see that. Um, with the uh, approval by the school district and the Imperial County Oversight Board. That was last Friday. I presented it to them. They approved it. So we can submit after you have, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll do this. We recommend that you do it. So we can eliminate this particular lawsuit and, and, and God knows you have others too many. This is one more that gets resolved without any expense. There's our, there are some conditions you may have read in, your, in the packet relative to what the school district wanted you to do. 100% of them you would have done anyway. So this is very benign. So it's a way to resolve this matter amicably and to, for all parties to move along. Now I can give you blow by blow events about what happened, what I think might have occurred that made this occur. I can tell you the city through the success rate has done everything they can to get the money released to the school district. The state would never let that happen. I'll mention one thing. We actually uh, convened a meeting of high-level people in the Department of Finance in Sacramento with your state representatives, with school district representatives. I was at this meeting, and we thought we had this thing in the bag then, but then we got punched again by the state. So nevertheless, unless you want to hear that, I'll stop with that. Other than to say to you, I am a veteran, and if, and if you didn't come up with the money to fund that program, I would have got it for you. <laughs> And so I would say there are a lot of veterans that are around that would love to fund programs like that. So maybe that's something that can be ginned up. They need to start it, though. It, they need to do that, and the city can be supportive. I know that's not having to do with this. I'm going to stop right there with my presentation, and um, I would be pleased to answer any questions you might have about the packet before you. Just thank you, you know, and uh, you're welcome anytime to bring those type of news. So, <laughs> uh, oh no! I well, we do this all the time. Okay, but it depends what it is, the, especially like children. <laughs> okay, we need to adopt the number ten and, and twenty. No, because we no. have a different success. It'll be later. Right. Later. 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 Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again very soon uh, on different circumstances. I'm working on a few other good projects that will bring um, a lot of good things to Thank the you. Center. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Item number 11, um, authorize the city manager to sign memorandum of understanding between Southern California Association of Governments and the city of Calexico regarding Rockwood rollout project. Mo se no, second Ms. Romo's motion to approve. So, moved by Mrs. Uh, Ms. Romo, second by Mr. Aureña. Any discussions? No. No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item number <coughs> 12, adopt a resolution of the City, con city Council of the City of Calexico, ratifying the submittal of surface transportation block grant application amount of 519000 with local matchup. 251,000. Okay. Measure D, project milestone dates and timely use of funds. Motion to approve. Second. Motion again by Ms. Reña, second by Ms. Romo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carry. thank you. <coughs> Item 13, approval of bid documents for reconstruction of restrooms at Enrique Camarena Memorial Library and authorize the Public Works Department to send the project out to bid. Good. Make a motion. Mo motion by Ms. Uh, Marilla Fernandez, second by Ms. Romo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carry. Acceptance of the Zip Books grant for fiscal year 2022-23 in the amount of 7128 and authorize the city manager and fiscal agent to sign the recertification, award agreement, and certificate of compliance and <coughs> any amendments thereon to and any related documents necessary to participate in the program. So moved. Moved. Second. 
moved by Ms. Romo, second by Fernando Fernandez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Fight 15, approval of sponsorship request from San Diego State University in Pearl Valley Campus, Cross Cultural Center in support of Hispanic Heritage Month event. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Romo, second by Mr. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item number 16, authorized city manager to sign partnership agreement with Imperial County Office of Education, Early Care and Education Program. Motion so move. Move by Mr. Garcia. Second. Second, Second by Fernandez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. 17, authorization of out-of-town travel for Council Member Garcia to attend the League of California Cities League, uh, League Leaders Workshop in Monterey, California, November 3. 2022 to right. December 2, 2022. Motion to approve. Correction. Okay. It's November 30th November 30th. to okay. 30th. You're not even for the whole month. No, just I'm not going for a month. Okay. <laughs> you know, Sorry. Just so. So November 30th, correction, November 30th yes. to December 2nd. Oh. Yes. All right, who moved it? Uh, uh, I'll make okay, a motion, so motion with correction. Or uh, okay. Second. You, 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 you. Okay. Uh, we'll make the motion. I'll, I'll make a, I'll make the motion to approve with the correction she of no. She made a motion to approve. I second it. Okay. Yeah, but we're trying to trying to clarify here. That's so, okay, no problem. No, no, but oh, he's trying okay. to he's trying to make it correct. So yeah. motion to approve with the, the correction of right number thirtieth. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Yes. And then second by Ms. Ariela Fernandez. Okay, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, uh, item nineteen. Um, out of state travel for training, FBI National Academy okay. leadership training for administrative staff and sergeants. So moved. Second. second. Moved by, uh, by Romo, second by Rola Fernandez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Number 19, discussion action directing regarding improvements to a city building located at 1100 Pearl Avenue, Colexico, lease for one year, one dollar per year to the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Colexico. I, I, do, I do have a, a comment on this one. Yeah, we do. I get comments, comments, comments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who wants to go first? <laughs> okay, so on this, on, on the language, I would like to be, uh, this to be revisited on the, on the contract, on the language that says uh -huh. as is, uh, because, again, we, we know that the, the, the chamber doesn't, doesn't have the funds, but I do also understand that if we don't do something to help, or at least to, uh, salvage that building, you know, because it's getting to the point where it needs help. So we will literally will lose it. So I, I need, uh, if, if this can actually be, uh, you know, brought back at, at a later date with uh, uh, maybe a language revision on the, on the contract, and then also maybe identify some uh, funding uh, source where we can put in some, uh, okay. some funds into, into this, because it, I think it's, it's, it's beneficial uh, for the city, for the chamber, and for our business community to have access to these type of resources. So, it, so in other words, we can't just approve the way it is right now for that, uh, leaving it at one dollar per year, and yeah. and with with the correction of updating the maintenance or whatever we need to do. No, could that be done? Uh, I'll defer to legal. If I, the if I understand correctly, the motion is the following. We will have to revisit the contract, the okay. terms of the contract, number one. Number two, we will have to bring this item back for your potential approval as long as we also bring the funding available to make those yeah. repairs. Okay, it is, okay. Okay, so we're gonna table it, in other words. Yes, we're gonna bring it well, back. We're gonna bring it back, back yes. with okay. those. Well, actually, um, it's actually, if you read the item, it says okay. discussion, action, mm -hmm. direction. Okay. So that's the direction that I'm getting. Okay. So it's okay. fine. So, so Mr. Garcia needs to make a motion for that. So I make a motion to uh, bring this back item at a later date with those, um, you know, correct, uh, not corrections, but revisions, or maybe uh, uh, look at the contract again and also identify, identify some funding sources for this, um, you know, item. Yes. Ms. Romero. Now, I have a question uh, because um, I need, uh, Ms. Colio, can you tell us um, about the contract we have with the Chamber of Commerce? Okay, no lo conozco, muy bien. Do okay. we have money right now to make repairs the, the, will, the building? For me, it's uh, the, la prioridad ahorita es bomberos. 
Okay, and I, I, I understand, and that's what I needed direction. So the reason why I asked in my letter is uh -huh. to first of all let you know that I have met with the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. They have addressed the concerns and the needs for the facility. So I want you to make you aware, more or less, how much it's going to cost for us to repair that facility. Correct. That's number one. So number two, fine. also to let you know that currently we have seven buildings that are not at the compliance. We have uh, several issues with the roof. Right. And uh, we have the pending fire station on the west side. And we have the library ongoing for a bidding process yeah, as okay. well. Once uh, okay. my plan is to address all those items with the finance department and see where we can get the funding with the upcoming uh, quarterly report to see if we can fit all those items. And if there's any room, we'll come back immediately with this item for your consideration. But uh, we had to make priorities for essential services that we had to provide with the community. And that's what the, I wanted to let you know that is, I want to discuss this item, but also want your direction to come back again if you see it in the vote package. Where, where, are, they, where, where are they operating off from right now? Uh, they're, they're not operating in the facility because what happens is when this agreement was completed in March the 22nd of this year, March 2022, my understanding that there was no a walkthrough. Right. And so to their surprise, when they opened the facility, they find out that it was flooded and right. it has damages to the floor and there's some roofing issues. So uh, the roof has issues. There were some repairs made to the roof but it was, it was flooded again. So I, part of the request is to, once the place is flooded, most likely there will be mold. So we will have to go and find out what the issues are. So that's gonna require somewhere in the $50,000. Okay, and to answer uh, Mr. Moreno's uh, question, they're meeting in Denny's, they're, they're being remote right now. Okay. They're, 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 you know, they're, they meet in certain areas, but yes. I mean, one of the main meetings is Denny's, and I feel that we do need to find some yes. type of funding because it's part, they're part of us. And, and we'll do, and as, and as a matter of fact, the November the second meeting, we have a big plan that we're working together mm -hmm. with the different departments to bring it back to you for your consideration. And if we see there's room for av available to start doing something, we'll let you know, but we're also gonna bring back the potential language that you want for this contract. Yes, especially the assist, because if we leave it as is, then we'll put in a, uh, just back on them. Exactly. And, and it's also for our, our benefit, per se, because if not, you know, we know what's gonna happen. So we'll what, I was, what I would recommend is to come on November the 2nd first with the quarterly report and the plan for the immediate needs that we have, and then come back mid-November with a plan for this facility. Yeah. So give me a command, more or less, to find out all the details. Sounds good. Thank you. Mid-November is your motion? Oh, for one, oh I'm, one? I'm not putting a timeline, but the, the sooner the, the better. Okay. Right? So if, if that's doable uh, mid-November or before that, you know, oh, whatever. Okay. I, I know there's priorities, like you said, but, but uh, that should, I, this should be I'm considered. Curious, okay. I, 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 I'm, really, I'm really asking because I, I would be more amenable to supporting your motion if it's after we have the plan for the yes. city facility so if it's mid November Correct. you know I'm not I'm not uh, again I'm not putting a timeline right okay. but okay. I, I want this to be considered and make sure that it's also uh, put into the priorities also so, right. so your motion is to bring back this item Correct. at a later date yes. yes and with the visions of the contract and with the potential funding to yes. do yeah. the permits okay perfect okay. Yeah, I, I, I am confused very very confused does the contract say that we have to do the repairs? Yes no. or no? No. Ah, okay. Does it look Is it contract or no? Is it contract or no? So the, what Council Member Garcia is mentioning is the following, because there is restriction on the contract. What he's recommending is to bring back the contract with amendments. And that's exactly the well, that's exactly what I'm, I'm yes. suggesting. Okay. All right. So the motion on the floor. Uh, thank you for your comments. The motion on the floor, Mr. Garcia, is again. Again, bring it back. Review the. Uh, you know, language in the contract, right? And then also identify some funding sources. Yeah. Okay. And I agree. I second it. And you second it? Okay. Yes. 
Any more discussion? We're not taking an action right now. We're just going to bring it back. Yeah, just to bring it With back. all Direction. those considerations. Sometime, yeah, mid November. You want to amend something on it? Like, no? no? You just want to leave it like that? You're okay. We're not taking any action right now. Okay, just, just going to come back to us with, with the information. Yeah. So it's direction. That's yeah. all it's direction. direction. And we'll talk more about that. Okay. Okay, all those in favor, aye? Aye. Aye. You, you, you said I too? Yes. Just direction. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, 20. Now we're at. Uh, 20. We're at. We're at what, wait a the minute. Emergency the emergency item. Yeah, the emergency item. item. Then we'll go to the last one, this one. Okay. So, um, approval of request by Mexican Consulate for the use of the C logo, participation, and support for the city of, as a co-partner of the Farm Workers Breakfast and Health Fair event taking place from October 27, 2022 to October 28, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Garcia, second by Senator Fernandez. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you, motion carry. And then we got the last one, which is the Collector Rebalance Executive Agency. Adopt the resolution approving settlement agreement between the Collector Unified School District the city of Calexico is a sector agency to the community development agency of the city of Calexico, uh, Imperial County Superior Court case number, ECU 10114. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Correct. It's the same item that uh, Mr. Yeah. Duquette presented. Mm -hmm. The first item was uh, the city council sitting as the city council city of Calexico. This is you as sitting of, as a board of the successor agency to the redevelopment agency. Okay. But it's the same item. Okay. Motion for approval, Mr. Ureña. Anybody second it? Second. Second, Mr. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carried. And item, a future agenda items? For Two future two. agenda items, we have a very heavy load for the upcoming uh, agenda because we have other bidding documents as well, an update. But more important, we have, we're bringing back the, we're bringing the uh, quarterly report with the plan that it's gonna take us a while to go over the plan. And so. Uh, I know, I don't wanna add, but again, you know, for future, yes. future, future, right? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm glad that, you know, the chief is still here. Yes. So um, lately there has, there has been uh, quite a few um, concerns, you know, by citizens with uh, parking throughout our city from uh, commercial mm -hmm. vehicles, you know, uh, in other, um, you know, um, um, type of a uh, transportation that uh, either block driveways or, or uh, makes, you know, that the uh, streets unsafe. Uh, so if we can uh, look into what we have in as far as ordinance mm -hmm. on that to address or mitigate some of those issues or that issue. Uh, and if not, if there is not a, an ordinance, if we can look into uh, putting one together uh, because that that you know again it, it's it's almost every week that I get a, at least two or three concerns and and I know I understand people are very entrepreneurial but you know our, our streets are also suffering you know from that uh, you know uh, heavy uh, you know um, um, you know transportation you know equipment that goes through and, and again you know that the, the unsafe uh, that it might cost, you know, the, this this type of vehicle in our in our residential uh, streets. Yeah, another thing is about how, I, I still would like an update on the reiteros. I, I know I understand that there's yes. a lot of illegal, and what is what is our department doing about it? I know that they've been bouncing the ball from one department to another department, and I think this needs to be taken care of and followed through. Anybody else? Yeah, Ms. Cole, uh, I would like to ask uh, you to inform us at our next regular meeting about the situation of the two uh, ports of entry east and west that we have in this part of the border with Mexico. We need to inform um, our population why why we have a, a lot of traffic uh, waiting to go to, to Mexicali. 
and and then I would like to meet with you, Ms. Collio, to discuss if um, we can still uh, have Christmas parade and uh, start some of the preparations to celebrate Calexico 115th anniversary in April 2023. Se va el tiempo, sí. I just have one item. I uh, future uh, a follow up on that or an update on the uh, SR ninety eight building uh, construction. I think they're getting ready to conclude that. However, I spoke to David. I know you're gonna say something about because you wanted to do some. Th there. Yeah, Let me just finish real quick. Yeah. So I spoke to Mr. David Aguirre. So what's gonna happen is that I asked him this question, and maybe if he can come and tell us. I asked him if well, so once we're done with the eastbound, what happens to the north, the westbound? Well, what happens is they're going to have to either start working on that, but that's going to create another problem for another, another year. So what's going to happen, they're going to suggest, I said if we can suggest to, to finish the east, all the way to the east, on the other face, number four, and leave those alone until the, the seasons over, the holiday seasons over, probably from March of next year, when everything dies down, they can start working on that. And so they, they're going to give us an update on that. What I would suggest then is to bring back at the ICTC to provide us with an update right. of what will be the next phases and maybe you can comment on whatever he's right. presenting. Okay. Yeah. So he, he'll, for that. sure he'll know. Uh, we, we, I requested on behalf of the city, and I'm going to go east, the, the, uh, the east side uh, of 98, which is all the way to, I think, uh, uh, Rockwood. Yeah, Rockwood, right? I, yeah. I, I, I can absolutely confirm that what you're stated is exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. As, as, as it has been reported. Yeah, because what's happened in the past, they said what's going to happen, we don't have somebody here telling us exactly what's going to happen. I'm writing, mm -hmm. then we get stuck again saying, hey, what's going on, right? And then nothing gets washed out, which you're washing, and then we get, you know, we get mm -hmm. uh, the issues with, with our, our traffic. So I think if he can assure us that sure, sure, in sure, writing, sure. that'd be uh, for the citizens of Calexico, we plan for that. Okay. Okay. Well, That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I need a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion by Ms. Rome. Okay. See all the favor. Aye. Aye. Well, you need to adjourn. Yeah.